How y'all doing, everybody? Happy Friday and welcome to The Wan Show. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. No, 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 really. There's actually a lot that has been going on this week. Uh, <laughs> one of the big... Uh, one of the big pieces of news is that um, our Lab32 branding for LTT Labs, well, might have gotten a little awkward, as some of you messaged me about this week. So we have been hard at work on that behind the scenes, and we'll have an update for you guys. Also, we... Uh, okay, no, no. Uh, ooh, VESA! has created clear MR certification to replace response time grading. If that sounded like jargon to you, don't worry. It's super cool, and we're going to get a little bit more into it later. What else we got? Valve releases Steam Deck booklet, and gaming hardware prices are just whack right now. Okay, you They're made the Steam the Deck place. booklet sound really boring, but there's a ton of cool nuggets, and and guess who's in it? Why are you? Why are you in it? Not by name, not by name. Apparently, they didn't think I was cool enough to actually put my name in it, but I'm definitely in it. And I'm gonna talk about that later. It's actually like a pretty exciting moment for me. Let's okay. roll that intro. Intro. <laughs> oh, I no, I've seen it before. I've seen it before. I've seen it before. It's very good. I should have looked up. So good. The show is brought to you today by Wealthfront, Backblaze, and Team Group. Why don't we jump right into our first topic? Thank you. Thank you, Frandall Wendell, for the WAN show intro. Yeah, thank you. Totally hilarious. Loved it. Uh, thank you very much for sending that over. Lab 22. No, you did not mishear me. I said Lab 22. Let's go ahead and jump over to my screen real quick here where I've got the one and only Sarah Dietschy rhymes with Peachy announcing Lab 22. Her lineup of stands for the iPhone, iPad, and, well, really any headphones. It doesn't have to be Apple headphones. Uh, you can see she put a pair of Sony headphones on there. With the Lab 22 branding now live on Kickstarter. In all seriousness, these things look super Pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, they were built in collaboration with, uh, oh, God, crap, Moment. Moment, Moment. That's yeah. right. Moment. And this is a super outdated tweet because they have absolutely annihilated their Kickstarter funding target. Um, 340,000 Canadian rubles. So huge congratulations to Sarah on this fantastic launch um, of these products. And uh, <laughs> um, oh, the timing though, to be clear, Sarah has been at work on this for over a year. Okay. Yeah. We've been at work on the lab for I mean, it's been it's it it's been a twinkle in my eye for for years at this point. But the branding actually only started to come together in the last like like weeks. So with absolutely no knowledge that she was working on this whatsoever, we were like, oh man, you know what would be really cool? Lab 32. Okay, there's that Chrono Trigger lab. Uh, there's the potential to retcon the meaning of LTT yeah, if we ever the, decide to. The abbreviation is still LTT. Take. Linus's name out of it and make it more just like the the group lab 32 LTT there, there there was all this like it had all this stuff Base eight math it had all this stuff thing. going for it right and then um oh no it is uh awfully similar to lab 22 so obviously as soon as I saw people tweet at me about it the first thing that I did was contact Sarah fortunately uh, she's someone that we are in touch with. Uh, we've worked with her a number of times in the past. I consider her uh, I'm maybe not a friend. I don't know. We're not like super close, but I wouldn't withhold information. I, I, I feel like I can speak very openly with her. So I'd say she's she's an industry friend. Um, and so we were able to have a, a quick email exchange about it. We're going to talk in more detail on Monday. But uh, initially, I just want to shout her out for being absolutely amazing about the whole thing because she was absolutely working on this before us. I want to make that extremely clear. And her response, tentative, temporary placeholder response. I'm not going to hold her to any of this, 
But her response after I explained what our long-term goal is for the lab, what our mission is for it, um, the fact that we could very well have physical merchandise with lab branding as part of funding lab, our expansion. Lab 32 could test Lab 22 products at I, some point. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, um, and, you know, obviously this is a really big deal for her, right? Like she's she's launching a brand. And, and it's the, going well. The first thing she said back to me, and it just like massive shout out, Sarah, for being super cool is your main product is pretty far off. And with supporting merch being clothing, I don't see how that interferes with desk accessories. Um, I don't want to say too much about her future plans, so I'm going to redact some of this. Um, I don't have an issue moving forward with our own names. If you don't, uh, maybe we can meme it up in the community and then just move on. The comments have been fun. And uh, I just want to say that's just about the coolest possible response she could have she could have given me. So even if we ultimately change our mind, look, she was there first. It's that simple. So even if we ultimately change our mind and we decide to pivot on our branding, I just wanted to say, hey, super cool, Sarah. Uh, really appreciate you being willing to kind of share, especially because our draft branding for Lab 32 is, I wouldn't describe it as um, similar necessarily, but it shares some some thematic kind of elements. Like we both went for kind of futuristic, like a futuristic look. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can bring up the email here. I can never remember how to spell her name, but it's okay. Thank you, Otto. Uh, thank you, Autophil. Here it is. Okay, so I haven't shown you guys. Here, I'm just going to do a snip. I, don't worry, I will do this very safely. I will not leak any information. I will not leak anything. I will leak. I will leak nothing. Heard that before. I will. I will leak absolutely nothing. Not even this. Uh, I yeah. There. There. I have LTT store up. It's fine. Okay. Cool. So we're on Linus's screen. Uh, so we showed her some draft draft branding for Lab Thirty Two, which was uh, done up by our Sarah, Sarah Butt. That I think looks absolutely fantastic. And you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it's. Oh, sorry about that, Luke. There you go. I, I wouldn't... love how. You, you, did you call it a? So popular today. It's the same people. I'm actually really mad. Oh, okay. Well, here, let me finish this up real yeah, quick, we'll and we should talk after. about that. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that it's that similar to Lab 22's branding. Um, there you go. You can see them side by side, but you can tell we were both kind of going for going for a thing here. So that's the update on that. Massive shout out Sarah for being awesome. Massive shout out our Sarah for being awesome. I sincerely hope that the Lab 32 branding you worked on hasn't been wasted. Um, I mean, it probably won't be wasted anyway, because even if we ultimately call it Lab something else, um, I, I really like the style of it. I really yeah. like the LAB. Yeah. So, I yeah. I do like any anytime you have something like sp that's like space themed in some way and you have an A, it never has the crossbar. Yeah. It's just a rule of life. Exactly. If it's in space and it's an A, there is no crossbar. That's just how it works. So go check out Lab 22, the, uh, as Sarah Dietschy describes it, the ultimate line of adjustable tech stands. Uh, maybe we can move the dial a little bit on her on her pre-orders. They really do look really nice. Um, very aesthetic, I think, as the kids say. And we will keep you guys posted with respect to our own lab branding and what that's going to end up looking like. Oh, also later in the show, I have an update from Gary. Um, Gary Key is the head of the labs, and he's given me sort of a, a roadmap for what tests are sort of ready to roll now, which ones will be ready soon. And I probably won't talk about it, but what's planned for yeah. the rest of the year. And I'm really, really excited to share that with you guys. So don't let me forget. Do do not let me forget. Uh, blow up in chat if if I seem like I'm going to forget. Luke. Yeah. Would you like to tell me about that phone call? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, uh, I've been a Telus customer for a long time now. Um, I have talked on the WAN show a bunch about how if you're in BC, you should like almost certainly be with Telus if you can for your for your internet. If they have fiber optic in your area. Yes. If they have ADSL in your area, then you can tell them to pound sand yeah. or rather dig up sand and yeah. bury some fiber optic lines in it. Yep. Yeah, because Shaw's whole fiber thing is like fake, basically. 
um, and Telus actually runs fiber into your house, which is fantastic. And it's been very, very stable over the years and things have been good. Um, something that I really liked was that every two years, like clockwork, every two years they'd give me a call because my loyalty discount would end. Yeah. And I would no longer be locked in with them. Sure. And they would give me a call and they would give me a, a count. This guy's a flight risk. Uh, they, call him now. <laughs> they'd give me a preemptive counter offer, right? Right. They'd be like, hey, your thing is over. You're going to go up to standard rates. What if we lock you back in for another two years? We'll upgrade your plan to a better plan slash and or it'll be cheaper or something like that. Yeah. Um, one time they called me and my plan went from 300 to 750 and it got cheaper. And I was like, Okay, 300 megabit to yeah. 750 megabit. Yeah. See, I thought you were talking about dollars. No. And I was like, A, why like, are you paying so yeah, much to your ISP? I was just going to say, there's no way I would pay that much. Yeah, Yeah. I don't think you've ever paid that much for anything. No, so. no. Uh, so I was like, this is sweet. And every two years, like I would completely forget about it. And then randomly I'd get a call from TELUS when I never get a call from TELUS. And I'd be like, hey. Hey, how you doing? This is going to be great. And I'd pick it up and some customer support person is like, all right, we're going to like double your speed and drop your price down. And I'm like, this is one of the best calls I get every two years. I love this process. And then I realized the other day, hmm, I should check my bills. And I noticed that my internet bill was like oh. really high, way higher than it should be. And I'm like, what the heck? And I was like, oh, it's been more than two years. They never called me. Okay. So I look into this. Last time that the person called me, they gave me free TV. I told them I didn't want it. I don't watch TV. But yeah. they were like, ah, it's like part of this thing. Just take it. It's free. And I was like, okay. The okay. thing expired. So I've been paying for TV. For TV. <gasps> that is unplugged sitting in the corner. Oh, no. Because I don't watch TV. Right. And my, I went off the discount rate, which I looked at the plans on their website. And there are plans that are significantly faster than what I have and are also noticeably cheaper than what I'm paying when they're not discounted. So I'm paying a not discounted rate. And not only is the discounted rate that everyone pays all the time, way, 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 way cheaper, but the not discounted rate is also cheaper than what I'm paying and is like considerably faster. So I'm just getting completely hosed right now. So you know I call them. Is that TELUS is a Canadian ISP and yet, Every single one of you can relate. All you have yeah. to do is take the word TELUS, yeah. sub in it whoever your horrible local ISP is, and you can follow along with Luke's story and share his misery. Yes, and, carry so, on. <laughs> so I call them up, and it's none of the people on the phone's fault. Of course not. So whatever, right? I'm chilling. But yeah. I, I am expressing like, like why did what happened? Why it's didn't a, I get called? It's a really unfortunate thing, but you almost have to get mad to get escalated. I found I didn't, a lot of companies. I didn't get mad. I was just confused and I had to go through a couple people because I had multiple things on my plan, sure. like the TV and whatever I've seen else. it before though. Yeah, I, I usually it's, so it's, usually it's fine, but um, most of them didn't know why because they were like, oh yeah, I've heard of those calls in the past. I don't know why they stopped or you didn't get called or whatever. Sure. So I was like, okay, like there's no, whatever. Eventually I get to the like customer loyalty person and we like borderline get in a fight because she's like, I just keep saying like, please cancel my TV. And she wants to go on this huge tirade about like how what they used to do was bad and people would complain about it and no one complains anymore. And I'm like, okay, I don't care. <laughs> I've expressed that I wish I had the call and if they could happen in the future, I would like to get them. That would be cool. Just cancel my TV, please. And then she'd be like, nope. Because I guess she like needed me to agree with her that it's cool that they didn't call me. And I'm like, okay. By the end of it, I'm like, I'm like very, very, very unhappy with this experience. But I got my stuff canceled and everything's fine. And I'm okay. moving on. Now they call now. me. Yeah, now they call you. All now the time. They call, really? But it's this well, they like twice in the last half this, hour. It's like third party studio. Studio? That like... It, they're called a Monet Studio or something. Okay. That call on behalf of Telus to try to sell me more crap. So what I the think hell is that Monet I Studio? think that person. I think it's M O N E T. Oh, interesting. There's an autocomplete for like Monet Studio Telus or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like a this is a thing. Yeah. So I think that person that 
I was angry with on the phone because they wouldn't stop trying to push their point instead of just canceling my TV and letting me get off the phone, just signed me up for like every TELUS marketing thing they could. Which was not wow. my point. What a day. I didn't want that. What a day. I just want to call every two years when my things expires. So you just like, are you staying with TELUS or no? Yeah, I'm staying with TELUS. Cool. We're going to like update you to one of our new plans. Everything's good. That's all I want. I don't want the freaking marketing calls. Stop it. So annoying. Oh, no. And it isn't usually that common. I think the reason why they called me that second time was because I told them to take me off their list and they were like, nope, we're going to get through to you. Um, and like every time that I've answered so far and tried to like talk to them, they're yeah. trying to sell me stuff for TV. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I really think it was that person. <laughs> I don't watch TV. I don't. I really don't. I don't want it. I'm not interested. So yeah, I don't know. I was extremely happy, like very, very, very happy with Telus customer service for a long time. Yeah. Because those calls were just a beautiful, amazing thing. Because who doesn't like yeah, getting called? Every I come to think of it, every time I complain about the experiences I've had with Telus over the years, you are you kind of you either are just like I've had great experiences, or you're just like I don't know. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm not going to tell you your experience is wrong. But like I've had fantastic experiences. To be clear, I've had good ones too, and the the the, the product is great. Yeah, the product is outstanding. Fiber in your home is great, and it's super stable. Yeah, it's like I don't think I've had internet downtime since I signed up for it, and it's been like two years. or three years. Like yeah. I, it's very very stable. It's super stable. It always stuns me when I'm like gaming with someone from like another country or something that is like very developed. It's and like, sorry, my internet. Yeah, it's like cut out. that happens. Yeah. Well, like, I, I mean, we live in like a storm time. area and yeah, it never like, happened. Back in the mid 2000s, it's not like we didn't have the same problem. Oh, yeah. I remember my my high school girlfriend's house, um, their uh, their ADSL line. So that was one of my terrible experiences with TELUS because they came out and tried to fix that thing literally like half a dozen times over the span of a year. And every time they're like, yeah, it's fixed. Like, you didn't do anything. No, it's not. All you did is like, power cycle the freaking ADSL modem. You didn't do anything. I'm telling you, it's not going to, no, no, it's fixed. See you later. Like it was, it was an awful, awful experience. But what would happen? I think they eventually figured it out was like somewhere along the line, it kept getting flooded or something like that. Rod, Rod Rosenberg was like, I haven't gotten my call from Floatplane. D darn it. <laughs> well, yeah, but doesn't he just auto renew? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, he's already this, grandfathered in at the low rate anyway. This is my, it's like, if you, if you want a comparison, it's like two years from now, we release three new subscription plans on Floatplane that are better and cheaper than the current ones that we have. Sure. But if you were subscribed to the old ones, we just leave you there. Yeah, which sucks. Like, that's obviously stupid. And their whole excuse was like, oh, we had a bunch of people complaining about those calls. I strongly don't believe that people were upset that they called once every two years and said, hey, things are going to be cheaper and better. See ya. Yeah, I, that that sounds very unlikely. I, well, okay, actually, it's possible. It's possible it's that possible. people would just get angry about a call from their ISP because they just don't want to hear from them. But the solution to that is just to put them on a no call list that yeah. actually works. Like I have that issue with our bank, <coughs> actually with our banks, because personal and business, um, they call me probably each at least once a year to ask me if I'm interested in some new service or if I need any help with my account. And every single f***ing time, I tell them, I don't deal with that stuff. You need my wife. Here's her number. I don't touch any of it. No, but really, you don't need to talk to the man or whatever, or whatever it is going yeah. through your head yeah. that makes you want to talk to me about this. Honestly, drives me crazy. We had like, a, contractors, man. My my girlfriend and I were, well, yeah. she was buying a car, right? Oh. Have I told you this story? No, but I already know where you're going with it. I went with her. Yeah. She did incredible research. 
She had literally like a, she's old school. She likes paper. She likes documents. She likes writing things. She had like a binder full of research that she had done on all these different cars, on all the different deals from all the different dealerships, all the different prices that people are getting. Yeah. Very, very organized. Very, very well informed. I'm coming along like doop, doop, doop. <laughs> Don't <I'm>, know cars. <laughs> I'm going to throw in I some like opinions, I guess. Acura. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I, it's, I'm completely fine with my car. The person that was trying to sell her this car the the one that we test drove it yeah. isn't the one that we bought i think this might be a small part of it but it definitely wasn't the whole part would only talk to me about things she would ask him a question and then he would look at me and answer the question and i'd be like i <laughs> like i i do this i've talked to you about this before i do this body language stuff every once in a while so he would look to me and and start answering the question and i would just do this <laughs> I do the exact same thing. And he thing. would just keep talking to me. I'm like, brother, I did not ask you this question. If that doesn't work, I will even just go. <laughs> yeah, like, what do you I doing? will point. I will point at her <laughs> while they talk to me. God. It drives me crazy. It was so, so annoying. It was such a bad experience. So anyway, the, the bank will call me, or the bank sir, will call me periodically and ask me about this stuff. I'll say, put me on your do not call list. They'll say, yeah, of course, sir. And I'll say, no, but really, put me on the do not call list. And it is something that I have, I, I've gotten kind of angry about. Because when I ask specifically not to be called, I wish to not be called. Yeah. So if they were calling people who had already explicitly said, put me on an, an actually functional do not call list, yeah. then yeah, they're going to get angry no matter what you're saying to them because they said, don't call me. So I can see their side that's of the fair story enough, there. But there's an easy solution to that. I don't call it. Yeah, exactly. And that's fine. And if people want to pay way yeah. too much for a service that's worse, let them. Whatever. But I don't think the majority of people are going to be like that. I don't know. It's just frustrating. Like maybe It felt I'm... like an excuse, in my opinion, to rake a bunch of people for money. Because they had this system that like, I'm definitely not the only person that figured out this pattern. I figured out this pattern over the course of like six years. They were doing this for a long time. Yeah, for sure. So a bunch of people were in this rhythm and then they stopped doing that. I guarantee you I wasn't the only one with Get hiked up bills money. because the second the discount drops, the bill goes up by a lot. Yeah. Oh, tons. Because a lot of the time it's like free for some period, six months, a year, long or enough like for you to forget about it. percent off and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, you, you don't get the call. You don't think about it because you're used to this cadence. Pretty much everyone uses automatic billing now. So... So then some amount of months on yep. like basically everyone, they probably had these cranked more expensive bills, which is brutal. I don't like that. Mystic Man on Twitch asks, what if people want to keep a grandfathered rate indefinitely rather than get a temporary great deal that goes away after a year or two? It's just that the thing about internet service is that assuming that, you know, your ISP is making any kind of investments into their infrastructure and that they have any kind of competition, even a duopoly is better than nothing. Assuming that... A couple of years down the line, your internet should be cheaper. Even the great deal. I mean, remember back when, okay, so I was in high school, uh, like like late high school, so you would have been like late elementary school, I guess. Uh, I remember how, you know, the best time to get a cell phone was Christmas because they would always have you know, deals with all these minutes bundled and all this texting. You know, we used to pay per text anyway. Um, that, that was like the best time to get it. And you could really get a smoking hot deal on a cell phone plan around Christmas time um, that would legitimately be better than anything you could get for the next couple of years. Yeah. But after that couple of years, there was almost always a better deal to be had and there's, there's and that's two... just the way it works that's technology baby it's the only thing that doesn't freaking inflate let's embrace it yeah. let's love it yeah. <laughs> there's two things i want to address too how One. much does your tv cost per diagonal inch luke how does that compare to the 1950s a crazy one that i looked into recently was just ssds because yeah. i remember when we first started working together that was when we were crossing the dollar per gig threshold yep and now it's like Penny's the gig. Yeah. It's incredible. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. What no, were you no, saying? No, you're good. So Bubbly Charizard in Full Plane Chat said, why not have a reminder set uh, to call or chat? Yeah, I do now. Yeah, but if you don't you need to, then why would you ever set it up if they are just going to call you? There was precedent set over the course of many, many, many years. Uh, and then the other one is someone, some, the, the, the question you were addressing, what if you just want this grandfathered plan? Yeah. That was my main counter argument on the phone, which was that, the current plans not discounted. So I'm paying 
before I do this call, I'm paying a not discounted plan. So I'm looking at a new plan, but not the discounted rate. The website wants to show you the discounted rate, but you can find the non-discounted rate. So I'm not looking at the discounted rate. It is faster and better in every single way and cheaper. There is legitimately zero reason whatsoever why you would want to be on your old plan. It is only better to be on the new plan, even if you're not locked in. You know what else is better? I, you know, shout out VESA for actually making monitor specs easier to understand. I think there's still a lot more work for them to do here, but having VESA Display HDR uh, certification has made it so much easier, not just, to, not just to test a monitor, because we have the equipment to test the peak brightness of a, of a display, for example. So yeah. we could tell you guys, hey, the HDR experience of this is not going to be great because here's the total possible contrast ratio, and here's why that's a problem. It really doesn't get dark enough. It really doesn't get bright enough. So the HDR metadata, yeah, sure, it can be interpreted by the by the display. It's not gonna it's not gonna break the chain of correctly I interpreting the metadata that accompanies your your video file. But it's not really the ra the the dynamic range is not really that high right? But VESA makes it simple by having these. And actually, I was initially opposed to them having even VESA HDR 400 and 600 in particular. Those two are, they're not, it's not, it's internally, we call them HDR because they're, <laughs> they're not. Um, and I was opposed to that because what I felt like was that it was an easy way for manufacturers to market their display as HDR when it really wasn't right. capable of it. But yeah. I've kind of come around on it because the the sort of unintended ironic consequence of them creating that HDR 400 and HDR 600 branding is that folks like us can quickly and easily look at a monitor and go, "Hey, you got the wrong certification. You suck." And it and it's and it's an easy thing for people to understand. Like if I tell you guys, if you see something that is HDR 400 certified, it is undeniably unmistakably a bad hdr experience by all means you know still consider the product just not if you're expecting to game or watch movies in hdr and have it really pop as for hdr 600 well you know what that actually covers a pretty broad range because i don't believe there's anything between 600 and a thousand so some vesa display hdr 600 certified monitors can actually be pretty decent, but at the bottom end mm, they're not that great and then vesa display hdr 1000 we know that those are going to be pretty strong and then there's there's one that's above that it's like yes very very hdr um so you know just shout out because monitor manufacturers are notorious for publishing utterly meaningless specification sheets. I and mean, do you, remember, do you remember back in the day, right? Mid 2000s, you know, going back to when I was product managing at NCIX, mid to late 2000s, you'd see monitors, okay, that had advertised advertised uh, pixel response times of, you know, five milliseconds or, or like, like, like single digit milliseconds, right? And you could look at them and almost watch the seconds <laughs> tick by on your clock while a pixel switches from white to black and back again. Like it was ridiculous. It was just clearly not right. Yeah. Or they would achieve that under very spe specific conditions that produced horrible, horrible ghosting artifacts. Excuse me. Well, motion blur uh, artifacts when you are no sorry um, overdrive. Sorry. Excuse me. Uh, overdrive artifacts where you would have not only would because the pixels are slow. Not only would you have a trail behind the object, but you would actually have a ghost out in front of the object as it tries to to drive those pixels ahead of time. It's like. Nobody would play like that. It looks it looks horrendous, right? Refresh rate on TVs was always a frustrating thing too. Oh, 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 refresh yeah, remember 960 hertz refresh rates on TVs that could only do 60? Yeah. Stop it. Literally just worse. But uh companies seem happy about this as well. Oh, we haven't I even is... said what it is yet. Oh. Uh, so so in Vesa's next move, they've created Clear MR, yeah. a certification that will replace response time grading. So just a little bit of background. Response time would be the time that it takes for a pixel to change from one state to another. There's different response times. Some of them require them to go to and then back. And some of them are gray to gray or black to white. Like there are different states. There are different um, 
some more and some less challenging ways to measure it. Um, but this clear MR certification is hopefully going to put that particular bit of marketing nonsense to rest. Okay, go ahead. Sorry about that. Oh, I was uh, actually just looking up what Blurbusters thinks about this, but I, I didn't find it yet. But oh, anyways, I can walk through it if you the, want. Or... The, uh, yeah, go for it. I'll keep looking it up. All right. So basically, it's a compliance test specification that applies to both LCD and emissive display products. So that would be uh, OLED would be the most common one of those. And CMR is the clear motion ratio. This is intended to be a clear numerical value based on the ratio of clear pixels to blurry pixels. They, um, wow, that's, that's actually, oh, wow, that's a really interesting way of doing it. Sorry, I'm just looking at this now. Uh, they say that motion picture response time and gray to gray metrics fail to reflect the true nature of blur because a solely time-based metric can't account for image enhancement and blur mitigation techniques like overshoot and undershoot. Uh, the ClearMR standard and logo program limits the use of the en these enhancement techniques during testing, which is good because a lot of the time you can tune something like overdrive to achieve a really good measurement in a synthetic test, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually a good experience for the viewer. Uh, there are grading slash rating tiers based on the ratio of clear to blurry pixels as a percentage. Oh, okay. So ClearMR 7000 would be 65 to 75 times more clear pixels than blurry pixels, for example. Um, so each tier provides a visually distinguishable change in clarity. So the bigger the number, the more better. And the range is from ClearMR 3000 to ClearMR 9000. I guess we can't be over 9000. Hmm. As Luke... Sorry, as Luke was saying before, uh, Samsung Display and LG Electronics seem pleased with this change. Um, here's a statement from Samsung. We applaud VESA's global standardization of the clear motion ratio, met ratio metric in ClearMR, a specification for blur-free viewing that we fully support and to which we have already certified our newest OLED display. I, I love that they're focused on OLED. Yeah, it's, how, how funny that the OLED manufacturers are the ones that are like, yay! Yeah. Yeah. Now everyone can know how much better we are. Uh, and then LG said they will continue to collaborate with VESA to ensure that their monitors not only meet the high standards demanded by VESA's performance tests, but are also well-equipped to satisfy the expectations and diverse needs of today's consumers. So it sounds like uh, Hardware Unboxed, which they, they do a lot of really fantastic monitor reviews. They really do. And, and Blurbusters are a little uncertain about this whole thing. Um, there's some, some funky stuff. Uh, there's a, there's a Twitter thread that I found with both of them discussing it actually, which is, which is very interesting. Uh, you can throw my screen up. Every once in a while, something good happens on Twitter. Yeah, it's rare. Uh, but it does, it does happen. Um, Hardware Unbox is talking about how VESA's new clear MR display certification is ranking 138 hertz OLED panels and 165 hertz LCD panels in the same clarity tier. Um, apparently it was deemed unfair that one has like some tech behind it. The hardware unbox said VESA, th this is an interesting little VESA, let's test clarity and blur, also VESA, but let's disable all the blur reduction and clarity improving features. Hmm. So that's a little weird because I, I don't personally yeah, like tough. that because why would you turn those features off if you were a consumer? I think that it's okay. Ugh. But then... Yeah, companies can also potentially cheat. It's a double-edged sword. Yes. Yeah, because if it's a feature that harms the viewing experience in some other way, like let's say hypothetically it reduced the overall color depth. Sure. Or something like Whatever. that. Yeah. Then we would not recommend that you use it, right? Or if it turned off some kind of um Oh, man. I mean, yeah, I'd say affecting color would be one of the one of the biggest concerns that I would have. Brightness. Yeah, yeah, brightness would be another big one. Like if you had a a feature like um like backlight strobing that was designed to enhance the uh, the the clarity of the image, but like you said, came at a, a significant brightness cost, then I would say that almost you need to test that display under both conditions. Yeah. In its with features, sort of, without features, uh, yeah, whatever. native. Well, it's kind of like you know, native versus dynamic contrast ratios. You'd almost have to have both numbers reported. With that said, I mean, for my part, I would rather just buy the superior panel in the first place without 
you know, some kind of, uh, of backlight strobing technology if I don't need it. But then if you do develop a workaround that works really well, well, then that sucks. And that's, that's pretty unfair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily have the right answer here. Um, I'm going to just on a personal level, I'm yeah. going to keep my eye on hardware and boxed and, and blur busters and see what they think moving forward. Um, but yeah, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Anytime specific companies in a space are extremely happy about a new standard coming out, um, or a new certification coming out, sorry, it can be cool or not cool, and it's it's a little tough to tough to tell unless you're really on the ground floor. It's probably better than nothing, which is what we've had up until now. But that doesn't mean there won't be room for improvement. And VESA has made changes to their certifications in the past. Yeah. So I hope they'll take all the feedback that they get 100%. and continue to improve this. Yeah. In the meantime, here's how they're testing. So they're using a digital high-speed camera, which takes pictures of a test pattern moving across the screen as it changes from, from one frame to the next. A colorimeter will verify pattern luminance, and products will be tested at ambient room temperature, native resolution, maximum refresh rate, so here's something that gets kind of complicated. Uh, handling variable refresh rate motion can be very challenging, and that's something clearly this test will not address. Uh, default power-up configuration and all after warming up. There will be no backlight strobing, and limits will be placed on overshoot and undershoot. Uh, and okay, then the rest is this. So my initial take, better than nothing, but clearly not a replacement some, for independent reviews some flaws yeah yeah but that's i mean we've always pushed that forward right more stuff more better well more info more better the thing is that's why we've never we've never really boiled products down to a score you know that's something that i've that i've been opposed to i mean i think pretty much since we started right there's i i know there was at least one time because I remember I, give a I was score really to something? surprised. I think it was like a Razer laptop, and it was like when we were still at the NCX studio or something. It was oh. forever ago. I think I gave yeah, something always... an Editor's Choice Award or something that was like it. that. But yeah. I don't do yeah, awards. Yeah, not a point score. Yeah, I yeah. don't do awards, and I don't do scores. Yeah. Because the reality of it is, if you really want to know about the product, you need to know the pros and the cons. It is always more nuanced than just 8 out of 10. Six out of ten. Six what? What are they? Why do I want ten of them? You know what I mean? Yeah, I find that with gaming. That's I. I really frown at point score ratings for games because it's so nuanced, and there's so many different things that people might not care about. And I find that when people get less passionate about writing these reviews for the games yeah they will stick to very rigid point score systems and like if you look at something like valheim yeah valheim's a fantastic game right it's really fun for a while and then you yeah. beat it and it's fine whatever but valheim's great valheim's graphics not good but that's not the focus. You shouldn't yeah. take an exact fixed amount of points away from yeah. that game for those graphics. And you shouldn't award that same fixed amount of points to another game that is a junk game with good graphics. Because you're yeah. you could you could go through and have maybe a specific section just for that, but your over your overall score reflecting that is garbage, in my opinion. And that's you run into that same problem with like almost everything. Because like, what if this monitor is like the best monitor ever? but the stand like looks a little weird. Yeah. Does it like really matter? Or let's say let's say RGB is part of your rubric. Yeah. Right? And it doesn't have it. And so so what? But Automatic also what if what if someone deduction? in the audience wants to not have that? The like, reality the of it is that you need some subjectivity. And I think that's something that particularly sure. in the gaming space um could be classified as a hot take. <laughs> but you know I think subjectivity I think, with re, used responsibly is mm. a really, really important part 
of conveying the experience of actually living with something, right? Like, I, yeah, Valheim's a perfect example of a pretty rudimentary looking game, but that has highly ad addictive gameplay. And I would also argue that if you get really into Valheim, you can see the beauty of it at times. The, the sure. lighting system that they have, the way it'll catch something in the right way. Every once in a while, you'll be like sailing across somewhere and you'll be like, wow, this game is actually like, it looks really cool. And then you'll look too closely at something and you'll be like, wow, this game looks like junk. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it, but it's, it's, it's interesting and it's a very unique art style. It's very easy to pick out of a crowd. It doesn't look like generic shooter level number 47. That is a modern warfare spinoff sure. of whatever. Yep. Like it, it's this time I'm, with zombies. Yeah. Some, some games have a particular art style, which is uh, like, I would even argue like old school Super Mario games. Yeah. They don't look bad. It's just pixel art. Yep. It's a spe it's a specific art style. Uh, yeah, anyways. Yeah, I, I read uh, one of those clickbait articles, why Final Fantasy VI was the best Final Fantasy game. Obviously, I'm going to click on that because definitely agree. Uh, but anyway, it kind of talks about a lot of what I've talked about uh, where like Final Fantasy VII gets held in such high regard in large part because it was the first JRPG to really be a smash hit in North America. Um, and VI in my opinion, has actually aged a lot better than 7, which might be part of the reason that it got a pixel remaster, whereas 7 uh, <clears throat> required a remake. Just just saying. Anyway, I sorry. Haven't I just wanted to get that barb in there to all the <laughs> Final Fantasy 7 fans. Who, to be clear, I quite enjoyed Final Fantasy 7. It's not like I didn't play it all the way through like 8 or something like that, but Final Fantasy 6 is the best. Oh my god. Someone showed me this. Ugh, who was it? Was it, was it Ploof? Oh, while you're bringing that up, uh, as we were talking about the next topic, the vase amount thing, multiple people in Floatplane chat, and that's like, that's a subset of a subset, right? Multiple yeah. people in Floatplane chat mentioned that they had the same problem with TELUS. So it's not just me. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Jeez. Anyways. Um, so I think it was Ploof who showed me this. It's a one-sixth scale statue of the protagonist of Final Fantasy VI, Tara Branford, uh, riding Magitek armor that is one of the most ornately detailed pieces of game memorabilia that I think I have ever wow. seen in my life. Hold on. there's a Here it is next to an actual human person. Look how Whoa. big this thing is. <laughs> and this too can be yours for the price of just like 13000 Eight hundred dollars. Okay, I got a level with you. There's it, probably so much work that goes into that. If it was like fifteen hundred bucks, I would seriously consider this as like a backdrop, a backdrop for my streaming setup, which I know I haven't used lately. I'll, I'll stream again, I promise. But I would, I would seriously consider it for like set deck or something like that. I love, I love this game. It was such a huge part of my childhood, and this, you know, seems like a definitive mm. collector's piece for it. And like, I'm, I'm assuming beautiful. I'm assuming it's probably like a, a lot of it's probably done by hand. And it's stuff. all painted by hand. Yeah. So like there's I mean, that's obviously too expensive for my taste, but like I'm sure a very significant amount of work went into that. Yeah. So. But thirteen thousand. Oh, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way. I believe someone's they're made in probably Japan. gonna get it though. Um like they're Oh yeah. Oh, I'm. Oh, I'm sure someone will. Yeah. I'm sure someone will. They've got plenty of time to buy. the The release date is actually November 2023. This is pre-orders right now, and they're going to make a maximum of 600. That's actually a Whoa, man. That's, that's a, a pretty cool amount of revenue. What it was 13,800? Did I say? 13,800. Yeah. That is 8.3 million dollars. Yeah, I was going to say like that's that's actually a lot of units. I was expecting you to say like 60 or 100 or something. Yeah. Yeah, 600 units. I mean... Six. <laughs> I don't know. One six of a six foot human is one foot, so it's pretty big. Yeah, but she's riding the what, Magitek, Magitek armor. armor, yeah. And you don't go in that, right? You ride on top of it? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, like, it's, it's, it's actually big. way bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely wild. Looks so cool. Um, ooh, I guess it's time to talk LTT store stuff. The biggest update that I have for you guys is that we have officially shipped our screwdriver to Project Farm. Yeah. Per his usual 
approach. Um, he insisted on paying for it. We would have been happy to provide one for, for nothing. So it wasn't, it wasn't about that, but he wanted to pay for it. So obviously we're going to respect that. And we shipped him a unit out of our inventory that we are currently producing. Uh, I actually built some myself. I sat on the production line for a bit, which is harder than you might think, um, because the way that the plastics work, they come out of the molding machine. It's Man, this video is... I've worked on production lines. It's going to be a trip. It's for bread, not screwdrivers, but... Um, so, okay, so you know that it can be pretty you grueling. Gotta, you got to keep up. You got yeah. to keep up. So the reason it's really important in this case is because once they come out of the molding machine, it just like drops and comes down like, like a little vending machine. Like, here's your two screwdrivers. Because uh, each, each shot makes two handles. So you you clip off your sprues, you throw them in the thing, you take the drivers, you in, or the handles, you inspect them, you put them on the little thing, and then you uh, you put the the ratchet assembly in. It's it's directional, okay. Then you take these little like like press press thingies, you put them on the top so that it's not just pushing down on the actual um, socket for the bit because it could scratch it. That so would you, be bad. So you put a hole that you put a thing in it. Makes sense. Then you pop it into this thing. It automatically goes to press fit the uh the the ratchet assembly into the handle and it's really important to do it while it's hot because more malleable you do the press fit and then it contracts yeah so that's what's going to keep the driver together that for for a press fit right so then your other machine okay is doing the oh, where is it is there a, i'm assuming there's a video of this it will be uh, so then your other machine is doing the press fit on the on the bit holder. So you take it out of this one, take the thing off. You got to do both of them, two at a time, mind you. You put it over here. You put it in this way. You put your bit holder thing on the top, and you plop this one in, and then it kicks two out the other side. You take those. You put it in the finished thing where someone else will will bag it. Your next one is out. Okay, so you grab this one, you cut the spruce, you inspect them, you put it into the other side of that thing. You put in your ratchets, you put on your things, you pump, you take this one out, you put it in the other side, you do the thing, you pop it, you put the thing. 40 seconds. That's the injection mold time. That's how long you have. I'm sitting here going, and the, the really wild thing is the lady who was at the station that I, that I hijacked made it look so, so easy. easy. Yeah. She's just like, like she might as well have had her headphones in, chilling to some tunes, watching, you know, watching a show she likes or whatever. She's just like, she, she's doing it. She's going. And I got to say, I am really happy to have the, the QC done here uh, because the kinds of things that they were rejecting parts for, I was like, yeah. And to be clear, that doesn't mean that that is going to be wasted. We can actually regrind up to 25% of the new plastics that goes into the next shot. So we can take those parts that are no good and like cut the sprues, take the bad parts, throw them back in the hopper, grind them up with the fresh plastic. And as long as it doesn't exceed 25%, it doesn't affect the quality of the finished product. So um, really glad to have the QC done because, yeah, they were taking just tiny scuffs and they were like no no nah, dog good yeah. yeah get rid of it good i mean it's a tool so realistically you're going to beat the hell out of it anyway but but it should show up nice it should show up looking like new yeah you yeah, show up really... to the game in a suit and yes we absolutely did film it it was it was pretty cool this has been such a long freaking journey and the timing couldn't be better because actually I guess now's as good a time as any to talk through some of the plans for the lab over the next little bit. Like this is, this is really, it feels like a lot of dreams are coming true for me right now. Um, the, you know, the screwdriver, the backpack is, the backpack is moving actually really well. Uh, I think we're going to see another burst once people can get that instant gratification Yes, I know. I'll do sponsors, Bell. Thank you. I think people are going to. I think people are going to move on it when they can get that instant gratification when it's actually in stock. The first two waves are already completely resold. I think people are going to be absolutely stoked when they get their hands on it. Screwdriver, same thing. We've got our pop up shop tomorrow. So if you're in the Vancouver area, hopefully we'll see you there. Yeah. Uh, Bell, do you want to post the details in the chat? Maybe. Thank you so much. Um, it's finally coming out, and it's all happening in time to build out the test lab of my dreams. Oh, like, and Sorry, one thing about the pop-up shop. We are yeah. streaming it. We are streaming a specific table where people will be welcome to share live 
their thoughts on the screwdriver compared to the competition. And I will talk in a little bit more detail about that after because when we actually launch back orders on the page is going to depend on you guys. You yeah. guys are going to decide. One thing I would say about that is, as far as my understanding goes, this is not my thing, but I'm just confirming right now. Yes. As far as my understanding goes, it is not being streamed on the Linus Tech Tips no, channel. Short Circuit. And it, I don't think it's being streamed on Twitch. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Okay, I was told no. Uh, sure, we can throw it on Twitch. I don't Floatplane. know. Yeah, let's throw it on Twitch yeah. and Floatplane. It's going to be on Floatplane. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, yeah, the Short Circuit YouTube channel is the YouTube channel that's going to receive the stream, not LTT. Yeah, if you're watching on YouTube. Um, so anyway, yeah, back to the lab. Like I've, I've, I mean, I've, I've traveled all over. I've seen amazing product validation labs. And honestly, like consumer electronics, you know, obviously I love them. I use them every day. But the thing that really tickles my my nerd fancy these days is that that scientific grade equipment. Like I, I and 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 it frustrates me too, because I see this stuff and I go, well, yeah, but but all this data and all this testing, it's all behind closed doors. I I want to see that stuff. I want to know that stuff. Like it's all hidden behind slick marketing, right? Like. Like show it to me. I I, I want to see it compared, right? Like I remember at um at Cherry at Cherry. Remember they had that machine that went and pressed the keys like this on the keyboard, right? So that they could validate their fifty million keystrokes. That not yeah, only the the fifty million keystrokes is like at least with that machine validating was like fifty million heavy keystrokes. Heavy keystrokes, <laughs> and the way the validation worked was that the 50 million keystrokes, it had to still perform within some, some tight tolerance of what it was like new after that. It wasn't just that it like still functioned at all. And I was like, guys, how do I get my hands on this machine? I want to test all the keyboards like this. And they were like, no. mm, um, we don't want to be seen as denigrating competitors products so we don't want to get involved and and so even going back that far it's been it's been so so frustrating to me and as i've as i've watched fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer publications do this kind of testing i've felt like there's just a responsibility at this point to to build it out ourselves and so i i want to talk a little bit about some of the really cool stuff that labs okay i keep bringing this message up and it keeps switching to a different conversation hello teams um to talk a little bit about what's going to be going on over the next little bit. Apparently, our robot is already moved to the new building yep. and set up in a new enclosure and fully working now with keyboards, which is really exciting. So the robot that you guys saw last time that was just in the early stages of beginning to figure out how to work with is now completely ready to go. The computer vision is working to identify where the keyboard is, where the keys are, it can move around, and it can measure the actuation force of keycaps, which is going to be just one part of our keyboard test suite. Yeah, but um, a time-consuming one. We're working on a really cool video. So there's a lot of fear-mongering going on right now about buying used mining GPUs. And oh, yeah. I've been an advocate for buying used hardware for as long as we've been doing this. Can't afford the latest and the greatest? Don't buy something crappy. By the not latest greatest, there's no, like there is this kind of this shame, or this stigma, or this having old hardware. I don't know what it is about buying things secondhand, but I don't get it. Is it still cool? Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Like who cares? Does it get the FPSs? Yeah, exactly. Well then, okay. Is it Let's stable? Go. That is that is something you do have to consider. You can run into trouble, obviously. But man, compared to back in the day when we were like taking part in hardware swaps on OCN or red flag deals or whatever, the buyer protections that are in stuff. place now yeah. for buying secondhand hardware online are unbelievable. So anyway. Um, this is really cool. Our automated testing suite that we used on our mining card testing video. We bought 20 used mining cards just from random eBay sellers. We, we bought 20 cards so that it's, a, you know, I, I'd say a reasonable a sample, size. sample size. 
And it was just, it was too much to, to manually test. But the team over there has been hard at work on an automated testing suite, and apparently it is working flawlessly. You hit a button, you come back in four hours, and the card is completely tested. With graphs spitting out and all this type of Super stuff. Super cool! Um, we're going to be expanding it. And that it. system is going to scale into more things, which I don't necessarily want to get into too much. But yeah. that, that system is part of the idea of building that, was building a framework for it to scale. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get any details on some of the cell phone testing that we're apparently working on. And we have our mouse tester beta 0.8 running as of today. Uh, so what you can expect to see is we're getting we're getting past the, uh, you know, <laughs> pretty much everything we're doing is issuing POs and waiting for, you know, shortages. Uh, we're, we're getting kind of past that stage to the point where I think as of probably if not mid-September, definitely early October, you guys can expect to see content coming out either about the lab or from the lab on at least a weekly basis. And I, it's been, it's been such, it's been such an endeavor. I've had, it's, it's been really interesting. I've had a lot of people internally and externally question the ROI of the lab. I mean, I think it's pretty clear. What's our head count up to now? We're oh. close to 10, aren't we? Oh, just for the lab? Just for the lab. Because you're hiring developers. Three developers, four developers now. Gary's hiring engineers. Two of them aren't actually here yet, but there's four developers. Yeah. I think there's more than six engineers, or maybe there's yep. exactly six. There's engineers. the facility. Uh, we've obviously talked a little bit about some of the equipment we're buying. So we showed the power supply tester from Chroma. Um, oh, a little bit of an update on that, by the way. We heard from the one and only Johnny Guru. He actually suggested that we change out our loads. Uh, in a way that will help us better validate ATX 3.0 compliance. So, hey, shout out, super Johnny. Cool. Appreciate you. super cool. So we're going to work with Chroma on getting that all sorted out. It's a little frustrating that it wasn't right in the first place, given that um, Chroma did help us with the spec, and we did make it very clear what we were trying to test. But, I mean, realistically, they're a gigantic company, and they build these testers for everything from PC power supplies to... Well, everything yeah, else. I, yeah, what everything <laughs> things that re receive and deliver anything power. that gets or, or outputs power yeah. or both yeah so things things happen and i am very confident that we're going to get it sorted out um another man another little update on that video is i had a lot of people like a surprising number of people leave comments on the video or uh, message me directly saying that they were that they were really upset about this uh you know, this YouTuber money flexing that I was doing in that video. And that kind of ties into the conversation that I was just having with you about the lab's ROI. Um, either the lab's ROI is super questionable, and this is something that we are, we are doing as a moonshot and investing in because we just really want to build it and really want this data, um, or I'm flexing, you know, spend like it's not a toy like i don't really it's not a car yeah it's not it's not supreme or gucci or like jewels um and i don't know maybe this is one of those things that i i just don't get but i was kind of taken aback by it because it wasn't the point of the video the point of how much it cost was this is the kind of gear that up until now could only be found in a product development lab well, now we're bringing it to a validation and review lab, which means that instead of all these numbers being locked away and hidden, they're going to be accessible to everybody. That's the whole point, democratizing access to this data. I think the, the title and the thumbnail might direct people sure, but that way. Why send me a message with concern about it if you haven't even watched it? Yeah, I haven't watched it, so I don't know. Basic. Well, it's a piece of like scientific testing equipment. No, I know. Like, it's, it's just the the thumbnail being unboxing 133k, and then the title being the most expensive thing I own, with expensive being in capitals, frames the experience around the the price tag. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair. It is expensive though, um, and it's it's like like a lot of you are observing. It's it's an expense that doesn't have an obvious direct ROI. Um, we're, we're building out this thing in hopes that it will make the content way, 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 way better and will 
make consumers way, way, way smarter shoppers. And I think I think spending um, money in the direction of trying to my beard keeps getting stuck in the pop filter. I should cut this off. Uh, <laughs> I think spending money in the direction of bettering the data that we have and increasing the data and knowledge in the space and those types of things is is good. Um, I just, yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. We've if got to spend it on something. It's better to spend it on that than a car. You know, there's a lot of people in the comments talking about how, like, right, but clickbait title is clickbait. And I guess, you know, for better or for worse, I don't see a problem with playing whatever game we have to play to attract people to learning more. Um, you know, if I have to, if I have to do what works and you know what, that was the top performing video on the channel in the last two weeks. I'm sorry. It works. But We've the talked, video, yeah, we talked about the stance on clickbait a million times, but the video itself is setting the stage for, cause a lot of people, like if you read through as many comments as I do, you can see a lot of people would come on to something like that, not knowing until they've watched the video that a piece of equipment like that even exists or not even fully understanding, you know, why we, why we need it. You know, I had people questioning why anyone would need it. They only need this for developing power supplies, not for testing them. But that's a big part of how I can understand if you want how your data to, to be that good. Yeah, how to make how to make these videos more digestible in the future. Like a lot of the time we're putting out a video that doesn't have all the information in it so that I can see what questions people are asking. And so it's an important tool in our toolbox to get as many people as possible to watch these videos that are impossible to get people to look at if we don't play the game. So yeah, I could have called it unboxing the Chroma, whatever model number it is, power supply test unit. But at the end of the day, if we take our mission seriously, which is to ignite passion for technology, well then we're not doing a very good job at that point. We need to bring in new people who don't know who Chroma is, who don't know why you need a power supply tester. We need to make it exciting. We need to make it accessible. And we need to start priming people for what this stuff is. So when all of a sudden we start coming out with content that's built around data we've collected from this machine, they go, oh, right, that. Stuff. Yeah, so I forget where I was going with this, but uh, I think I was doing an LTT store update at some point. Yes, I, I know. I know I will. I promise. So we shipped a screwdriver to Project Farm. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, talking about LTT store, there's a deal. I got you, Nick. Uh, the deal is if you spend $100 on anything, you get a free meme face sequin pillow. Free pillow. All right, so excellent. If your cart value is a hundred dollars or more, and then you add the meme face pillow, you get it for free. And we haven't done any of our. We haven't uh, responded to any merch messages yet. Hey, thanks, Edward G. Picking up a backpack. Love it. Uh, we haven't responded to any yet, but we will be responding to merch messages later on in the show. So guys, stay tuned. And if you place an order during the show. Pay close attention in the checkout because there is a field for merch messages. You can either put a little message up there for everyone to see at the bottom of the screen, uh, or Bell might respond to you, or uh, he might curate it for me and Luke to have a look at later on. In the meantime, sponsors. what do you want to talk about? Uh, let's do one more topic, then we'll do sponsors. One more topic. Uh, there was a few good ones this week. Uh, Apple self service, Valve Steam Deck booklet. Let's talk about the booklet because I I am sure. a little lost on this. Sure, I think it's interesting. Valve has released a very pretty booklet, and you know what? That is true. Uh, to it is pretty. To introduce the company and Steam to new markets, namely Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. And it doesn't cost two hundred and fifty dollars or whatever Apple's book cost. <laughs> you they just send you a PDF and you mm -hmm. can print it out for yourself. Yeah. The Steam Deck will be released in these markets through Japanese company Komodo later this year. The booklet is available in English, Japanese, Korean, and traditional Chinese. Physical booklets will be available at the Tokyo Game Show next month. Um, and there's a bunch of things in the booklet, including... I'm just scrolling through it right now. Including you? What? Yeah, I made it in. What I made it mean? into the booklet. Where? Uh, hold on. I got I to gotta find it. This was like, honestly such a uh you know i made it dad moment right 
uh, I'm trying to I'm G- trying to find Gabe, the spot where Gabe it is. Senpai recognized me. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, here or someone else did. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, but yeah, here it is. There it is. Okay, 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 okay. The Steam Deck's physical design was built with comfort in mind. The rounded grips make it comfortable to hold for long gaming sessions. We tested many different grips. The hardware was also designed to be repaired, replaced, or upgraded. The PC community is full of people who love to tinker and upgrade their machines. So we've made it easy to open the back cover with standard tools. Parts are clearly marked, and it's possible, for an experienced customer, to replace many of the main components. We've already seen the Steam Deck community successfully replacing the... Oh, they called it a hard drive. Oh, no! Attaching an external GPU. Uh, shout out UFD, and I think there was someone else who did that, but don't quote me on that, um, as well. 3D printing stands, cases and attachments. I know Dbrand's been working on attachments. And even attaching a PC-grade heatsink to the back of the device. For fun, we definitely don't recommend this one. <laughs> Come on! Get owned. Come on, Get Mel! owned. It's faster, runs cooler, Get owned. and in my humble opinion, looks freaking <laughs> awesome. Looks so good. Alex outdid himself with the design on that one. Hilarious. And I helped. Hilarious. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> All of these cool things and this other cool thing that you shouldn't do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was awesome. Um, yeah. And the booklet was about more than just Steam Deck. It's um, it was a, a pretty cool window into you know Valve's processes, their way of thinking. Um, they see their company as being based on principles of openness and access that define the open PC community. Uh, I mean, I think that they have done a pretty good job of walking the walk over the last little bit, particularly with respect to Steam Deck. I don't know that it was always that way with their hardware products, but it's definitely, definitely moving in the right direction. Uh, overall, it's been good guy Valve for the better part of at least the last couple of years. Uh, they provided a brief summary on how Steam was created to automate game updates, which really did solve a very real problem and was a huge, huge motivating factor for me to essentially completely stop pirating games. I don't, I don't own or play a single pirated uh, game anymore. It's like, oh, no, I shouldn't say that because, um, like, okay, technically, even if you own a cartridge, downloading a ROM is pirating the game. So... Okay, no, no. But PC games, I don't think I own a single pirated game. Everything's just in my Steam or you play yeah, or whatever so. library because, man, things being auto-updated absolutely solved a major, major pain point, especially with respect to multiplayer, which was really taking off at that time. Man, it was it was real weird back in the day when you had to get updates, not even from like the game publisher's own website. You had to get them from or Game Facts or like whatever. What was the name of that? It had like military it... Major Geeks. Major Geeks. You had to get updates from Major Geeks back in the exist. day and stuff. Like that was that was a weird time. I remember if you installed Call of Duty Modern Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare back in the day and you went to the server list yeah it looks the same that's awesome <laughs> i actually love that um if you went to the server list on call of duty 4 modern warfare if you just installed it and went there there was no servers yep it just you had to go to broken. major geeks and download two updates and yep. then it would work like how people even figured that out okay you would say like oh the youtube videos and stuff this was you know internet was in a different time okay yeah, I mean to be clear, I do have some issues with automatic updates. Um, people are talking in the ch in the float plane chat about Shouldn't removing be features. Shouldn't be forced. Uh, yes, and uh, Beat Saber in particular is super annoying because every time they release a new like map pack, it breaks all my mods for like a week. And like shout out the Beat Saber modding community, you guys are amazing. The fact that you're able to turn around these updates so quickly for no pay at all. Yeah. Like just the the passion in that community is incredible. There is often ways. But to as a gamer, contribute. it like still blows, right? Yeah. You know, you don't want to just not be able to play your custom songs. I, that rarely happens anymore, actually. It hasn't happened in a long time. That's something I've been trying to do. But like leaderboards and stuff. As my like, I've grown up and my financial situation has improved is like open source software that I use that is free, that has like contribution links. I've tried to recognize, sometimes you don't really think about it. Oh, but yeah. I've tried to recognize like, yep, oh, that's fair. I use this. I'm going to go contribute to the creator and, and more than just a coffee. And I've, I've been trying to do that more consciously over time. But yeah. 
I just would like to issue a correction. I meant privateered games. Oh, yes. Yes, very good. Uh, so they shout out their hires from the mod community, namely the devs of Day of Defeat, Counter-Strike, Dota 2, Team Fortress, and Portal. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that they, like, basically bought their best game yeah. is like... <laughs> like... Like, what has Valve actually developed? Like, like internally? Yeah, Portal came from a group of students. Counter-Strike was purchased i believe is that the one you're talking about i think it was a mod right portal i was counting as their best game but okay yeah. i mean obviously it's open for debate yeah I, yeah, yeah, yeah like don't don't come at me please yeah, i think i th if i were this is old memory but i think counter-strike was like a mod for half-life that they bought or something or brought in or did something yeah, with. Yeah. And then Portal was a group of students that they ended up hiring team on. Team Fortress was also a Half Life mod that they like brought the team on board for, if I recall correctly. Yeah, cool. So amazing. Uh, so Dota 2 was clearly a Warcraft 3 mod initially. Uh, yeah. Then, so, <laughs> little bit. I didn't, I didn't realize how many of these things came externally. Like how many games <laughs> Valve has actually made? Um, well, it made them, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, they have pretty photos of all the prototypes. Uh, that was actually a very cool page. That was fun to see. I love that kind of stuff. Super into that. Yeah, like why hide it? It's so cool. They have plans for shipping a SteamOS general installer for consumers and other hardware very manufacturers cool. soon. That's super cool. Very cool. Happy like, about that. Okay, let's say I prefer the hardware of an INEO device or something like that. Why don't I just dual boot? That'd be sweet. Ah! That'd be super cool. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, the Steam Deck interface will soon be available on PCs plugged into TVs and in VR, which is super cool because they've done a lot of really great work on it since launch. And the most important note, Steam Deck represents the first in a new category of Steam handheld gaming PCs. In the future, Valve will follow up this product with improvements and iterations to hardware and software, bringing new versions of Steam Deck to market. So I believe this is the first time that they've actually committed to new Steam Decks, although it was fairly obvious based on the colossal success of this there product. There was a couple things that Gaben said that would be like pretty hard to interpret in any way that isn't we're making another one, but I don't think he ever specifically said it. I could be wrong about that, but yeah. There is some discussion questions. Do we go into these? Um, No, let's do sponsors. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sponsors. That all, that all looks good. Party time. The show is brought to you by Wealthfront. Right now, the economy is in <clears throat> an interesting place. Is it a recession? Is it a bear market? What's going on with inflation? Yeah, those are all questions that are for people above my pay grade to answer. We can't tell you what's going on in the future, but we can tell you that Wealthfront is a great place to earn more on your savings. Wealthfront is an automated investment app that's designed to help you save and invest your money. Right now, you can earn 2% annual percentage yield with a Wealthfront cash account, and getting a cash account is easy. It takes just a few minutes to sign up, and then you'll immediately start earning 2% interest on your savings. And when you open an account today, you'll get an extra $50 bonus with a deposit of $500 or more. There are already nearly half a million people using Wealthfront to save more, earn more, and build long-term wealth, so why wait? Earn 2% on your cash today by visiting Wealthfront.com slash WAN to get started. That's Wealthfront.com slash WAN. The show is also brought to you by Backblaze. Starting at just $7 a month, Backblaze offers an affordable and easy-to-use cloud backup solution. They make it simple by allowing you to back up almost anything from your Mac or PC and access it anywhere in the world with their web and mobile apps. They even let you restore your data by mail. A hard drive with your data will be shipped right to your door, and when you're done, you can return the hard drive within 30 days for a full refund. And if you're worried about accidentally deleting files, you can increase your retention history to one year. Wow. For just an extra $2 a month. How does that even work? Some of Backblaze's business model stuff has always been like, huh? <laughs> with over 55 billion files restored and two exabytes of data under their management, Backblaze has got you covered. So don't be that person who forgets to back up their important files. Sign up and get a 15-day free trial with no credit card required at backblaze.com slash WAN. We're going to have that linked down below. Finally, the show is brought to you by Team Group. Team Group is a leading provider of RAM and storage for those looking to build a new PC. And they have recently opened their Amazon.ca page and have tons of things on sale to celebrate. Products such as their Elite DDR3 16 gig kits, their MP33 one terabyte SSD, and their GoCard 256 gig micro SDs are all on special. So don't wait, click the link below if you're in Canada to visit Team Group's Amazon.ca page. 
What would you like to talk about next? Should we do a couple merch messages? Sure. I feel like I feel like we should probably do I that. I do want to I do want to pick a bone with the people really quickly about merch messages. Oh. I have I have a thing to say. There's been a debate, there was a Reddit thread about it. Um I've seen comments about this before about how such a high percentage of the show is ads and they're including merch messages as ads. Oh. Which is I think a little bit of a stretch. But I do understand they are revolved around people giving us money. So, okay, sure. I can give them that. But my counter argument would be the length of the show, which is something I've never seen anyone talk about. If you look at the length of the show from like the pandemic era shows and a little bit before then and a little bit after then, they're like an hour long. I have seen some that are less than an hour long. <laughs> I've seen some that are a few more minutes than an hour long, but they're mostly an hour long. It is true that quite a bit back, they were like an hour and a half long, pretty consistently. We yep. used to aim for an hour and a half. We yes. stopped doing that. Because it was Because there wasn't enough news, basically. So we went down to an hour. Merch messages got introduced, and roughly around that time, now we have shows that are like two and a half hours. So I think the percentage of the show that is topics has changed, sure. Right. But the show's just longer. Some shows we're going to have more topics to talk about. Some shows we're going to have less. Sometimes that is our fault. Sometimes we miss major topics. There was a topic that we should have talked about last week where what there was, was this again? song that would crash yeah, hard drives. I really wanted that to talk about so that. That is so interesting and so cool and it wasn't forgot. in the doc. Yeah, I know. And I that's forgot. brutal. So that sometimes it is on us, but it has always sometimes been on us. We have missed things forever. Um, so I don't know. That's my counter argument. Take it or leave it. But yeah. I also really like them a lot better than some of the previous ways that we had of uh, of Expanding interacting shows. with chat. Also that. Like yeah. throwing extra money at Google for no reason through Super Chats or Twitch through Bits. I mean, uh, I, we're, we're going to briefly touch on the most recent Twitch controversy. Not gonna not gonna not gonna say too much about it, but I've had enough people message me we've about been, it that we've been advised by Riley to avoid. Yeah, we need to at least acknowledge it. Um, but you know, yeah. whether whether you want to to give these, you know, giant fang sized corporations your money or not, um, you know, that's that's up to you. But we feel like it's a lot better to if there's gonna be overhead, like to be clear, our take on a super chat is higher than our take on a merge message overall well but at merch least message has no implicit profit so yeah so so but at least with a merch message the money is going to you know the the hard-working people at um innovation tool and die or ph molds or our overseas uh, ratchet manufacturer, or they're going to our local t-shirt printing company, or they're going to like they're going to someone. They're not going to Fang. Um, so I I strongly prefer them. And honestly, a lot of people have. I mean, people send us just like really good discussion topics. Yeah, like it's good. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Why don't you hit us with some merch messages, Mister Bellavance? Uh, starting with this one from Anon, it's just something light and easy. What was your most embarrassing childhood phase? Oh, Lord. I mean, well, there's... that was always cool. Wow. I, I didn't mean, have an embarrassing phase. That was a cool as a cucumber response. Um, I had many embarrassing phases. I, I, I used to suck two fingers, like, like at school. Like wow. I was, I was like seven or eight by the time I, I didn't do that anymore um oh man i bet i was a bedwetter till i was like 14 or 15 like when you are when you are like rapidly approaching dating age and like 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 almost at the point where you're like going to sleep in a bed with someone else and you are still like peeing the bed it's pretty stressful that, i could see that being um pain. definitely you know it, i i I don't know. Maybe it. Maybe I'm just. Embarrassing. Maybe guess, I'm just an. Um, I guess internally embarrassing. Uh, with yeah. Yeah. Is that embarrassing? Well, I was, I was See, the Luke, reason. Why have I was you ever ask... peed yourself at a sleepover? No. Okay, and had to like hide your sleeping bag. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Is that I was going to say I don't think anyone else is involved. Tone deaf much? Well, I was going to say I don't think anyone else is involved, and I didn't know. Like, does does embarrassing need to have other people involved? 
Or can you be embarrassed without anyone else involved? I think you can be embarrassed. I didn't know if it was a different term or through not. Through fear of someone else being involved, okay, I guess. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would get up at like five in the morning at summer camp to make sure that I didn't need to like stash anything. Yeah, that sucks. And I'd go to the bathroom and I would hope that nothing would happen between then and when everyone else would wake up. Like, oh man, yeah. Uh, so, okay, there was that. Um, there was that period in high school where I was like, man, man, I was weird. I did like weird stuff. Like not just dyeing my hair. Like I did this thing once where I bought metallic gold spray paint and I spiked my hair and I spray painted spray my painted. hair like metallic gold Whoa. and went to school like that. Did that look cool? It sounds like it might have looked, looked cool. looks sick. Yeah. I mean. Is so, that I'm embarrassing? Sure that sounds. Well, I'm embarrassed cool. now. <laughs> Why? I mean... It sounds sweet. I don't know. Okay, I, here's the thing, cool. though. Whether or not something is cool, it's it's not a function of what the thing is, right? It's a function of who's doing it. Mm -hmm. So was spray painting your hair gold cool? Sure, if somebody else did it. <laughs> but I wasn't cool, <laughs> so it wasn't. I still would have thought that was pretty sick. Yeah, well, I wish you went to my school. Then we could have we could have met earlier. I could have had some muscle protecting me back then. It would have been a good thing for me. I don't know what you would have gotten out of it, but yeah. something. Yeah. The, yeah, I looked it up, and I guess it is pretty independent of other. I I thought embarrassment had like you had to be embarrassed because of whatever, but embarrassment can just be a feeling of shame. So that would mean that it is kind of irrelevant. Doesn't matter. Um. Actually, oh, this is fun. This is not related to the merch message, but I actually had my former high school reach out to me today. The high school? Like the school itself? Yeah. Oh. Well, the principal of the high school, which oh, okay. I guess functionally is the same as the high school reaching out. Um, I follow my old computer teacher, teacher on Twitter, and he follows me too. He's really cool. So like, I, I'm very, that's actually awesome. I that's, that's pretty wicked. sick. Yeah. Um, so this is this is the school I went to. Uh, the Garibaldi School community has a rich and diverse history. Uh, I don't see a ton of diversity in there, but... Um, <laughs> uh, Oof. <laughs> bell tied in from the mic. <laughs> um, then they go on to talk about how they are on the shared unceded territories of two of the BC First Nations. So... Yeah, that I guess is Doing diverse. Great. Uh anyway, they have some notable graduates and this was really cool because I had absolutely no idea that some of these people like existed. Check this out. This buddy is the world record holder in tree climbing and he went to the same school as me. Uh this is absolutely wild. This is him. Okay, check this out. 80 feet Ready, set, go. Holy. He, I don't think I could crawl that fast on level on ground. ground. <laughs> yeah. He looks like an actual animal, like a so bear. Is, is this when they have the like rope around the back or whatever, a chain or whatever it is? Yeah. Yeah. Look at him come down too. Apparently they can go as Whoa. fast as 40 miles an hour coming down. So he stopped competing in that and started competing in other events. Um, that's pretty cool. And then even though there's this other event that's like, Oh yeah, here, here, here's a good still of it. This is, this is, this is wild. This is wild. Check this out. So you have to make yourself somewhere to stand and chop off the top. Well, you have to make yourself two oh, places yeah. to stand. Have you yeah, seen so this you, before? Yeah, so you cut in and you put the plank there and then you stand on it? Yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he was talking about, uh, I was reading like an article about him and he was talking about how compared to the other guys who compete in some of these chopping events, he's like almost a hundred pounds lighter than some of them. Like, like tree climbing, yeah, all the dudes are kind of small like him. Well, small-ish, like he's 5'10 or 5'11. It's not small compared to me, but whatever. Uh, the point is, he's like, yeah, so in that event, I made sense physically. But in these other events, I, you know, was a bit of an odd one out. And so I had to make up for it in precision. Let's take a moment to observe that nobody is watching Buddy over here anymore. Because uh, he's already done. Like, un un unbelievable with an axe. Anyway, I I I've never really, I don't I don't want this to come across wrong, but I've never really cared about like what another 
person who, you know, I feel like has been arbitrarily put in the same group as me has accomplished. Like, I don't, I, I don't feel like a sense of, of pride that another Canadian ran really fast. Like I love, I love watching, um, you know, uh, high, high level athletics. Um, but I don't, you know, I, I don't feel like I necessarily have anything in common with I, that person I unless like we worked for, on it together. I always cheer for Canada at the Olympics, but that's mostly just like because it. Well, what else are you going to cheer for? Like, makes it slightly more fun. Everyone else yeah. on the couch is cheering for Canada. Are you just going to sit there and like? Oh no! I don't... Right, like I it's... usually watch the Olympics alone these days. But... Oh well, okay, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> just a lot of other people don't really care my mom and dad do so like if i watch it with them that's cool but yeah i i, I don't like i'm not like Ugh. If, if the canadians lose i'm not like oh my goodness i lost i'm taking this personally like no yeah no. so it's and like i i have relatives that are on like huge ancestry kicks right now mm. like did you know your great great grandfather did this and i'm like i guess it had nothing to do with siring me I like it. It didn't. It didn't make me like smarter or faster or stronger or what? What difference does it make to me? And and I know that culturally, for a lot of people, that kind of stuff is super important. I think it can maybe be inspiring in certain cases. Like if if you're like, oh, someone in my ancestry went down some path of of expertise or education or whatever but it, maybe i can do that thing but too. it goes the other way too like i you'll hear about people who feel a sense of shame that they you know are yeah, distantly that's... related to some traitor or criminal or whatever else like I, you didn't commit the crime okay, you're chill sweet. you're Don't good do that. Yeah. yeah like you seem you seem chill everything's everything's good um but it was it was it was kind of fun it was kind of fun going through and and looking at some of the uh some of the other former graduates I think it says a lot about the um, high school I went to that the there was like 15 people and the school's been open for like <laughs> 70, 70 years or something like that. Um, it also, I mean, part of that is like, did they actually check in with what everyone's doing? No, no, they yeah. didn't. That's going to be a huge part of it. And you know what? this might be something that they're just now starting on, like going through and trying to, you know, figure out where the heck everybody's at now. I would also potentially argue that they might be very focused on physical competition and business success mm. instead of potentially Athletics other Athletics was things. pretty big yeah. at our school. Uh, yeah. Nothing that I could compete in. It was all rugby, volleyball, basketball. Yo. <laughs> you, you, there's a there's a role in rugby that you actually wouldn't really get at. Yes, just like there's a role in rowing that I could technically participate no, in. No, the rugby one's like major. Because he has, he has to like get the thing or whatever. Yeah. yeah, but I'd get killed, Luke. No. My one of my buddies, you met him at the LAN. Uh, he was the guy with the really disgusting keyboard. Um, nice. He he played that role. It's called Hooker. I wasn't sure if I wanted to say it or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's yeah, called no, hooker the because one, they use their to heels use, you to get the hook thing. Yeah. yeah. So he played that role and I played eighth man. And there was one game where I was already super pissed off because I got a clotheslining penalty while I was actively on my knees. Um, I, yeah, no, it's rough to be tall, Luke. It was I feel so, so bad annoying. For you. That's Being so alpha ridiculous. Chad, That's you know, so ridiculous. Gigantic guy, so you can clothesline people on your knees. Oh, woe is, woe is Luke. Yes, That's carry ridiculous. on. Please I tell should me not, more. I should not have gotten like removed from the game. Mm -hmm. Yes. For something that was yes, very obviously unintentional. Tell me um, more about your father. But that, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my dad's also a Chad. Um, yeah, I know, right? But I, I, I had to like throw people off of him because they were, there was like a dog pile, basically. Yeah. Uh, and they, they wouldn't get off him. And that's one of my like favorite memories is like, get off my friend. It's ripping these people. Yeah, off. but he could this have been damaged cool. at the bottom of that pile. That's what he I'm was trying fine. to say. He's a durable. That's what he's I'm a trying fighter. to say. He's Do actually I look durable terrifying. To you? He he trains like MMA and stuff. He's a yeah. Very, he's I'm a very I'm not terrifying, person. dude. I'm not terrifying. Yeah, but you could be. Oh, speaking of being terrifying, uh, it is now I believe confirmed that we have an upcoming channel super fun where I will be fighting Dennis. Like actually, like sparring, but okay, but yes. Are you guys going to like where? Okay, 
<laughs> so many questions. <laughs> what? Okay, what kind? Um, I believe it's going to be like Taekwondo sparring. Okay. Yeah. Are so, you going to like a place for this? I mean, with, we'll like, have to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Like we'll have to go. We are gonna allow takedowns though, but like no, no ground brawling. Mm. Um, so we'll allow takedowns. We'll allow. Uh, we'll allow sparring. Because um, you, you and have the stakes. A... Oh, go ahead. You have a pretty fancy belt in that, don't you? Um, I'm a black belt in a, a, a different... It's kind of like it's a mixed... Okay. I don't want to call it a mixed martial art discipline because MMA has mixed. taken on a very, very different definition over the last 10, 15 years. But it is. it does not fall squarely under karate or judo or taekwondo. It, it, it's a mixture of different disciplines um so yes i do have a black belt however it has been a big fat 20 years gotcha. since i trained yeah there's a few things like that for me as well so i'm gonna forget <laughs> some stuff but let's talk about the stakes because this is okay. pretty fun um as you guys probably remember from i believe it was last wan show dennis uh with some help from buddy colton did some damage to the hardwood floors in my house i've had some people reach out saying uh. that there are ways that you can repair even tongue and groove flooring by apparently like precision routing out the board and then like gluing down a new one. And like, yeah, oh it's not my. like done right anymore, but it looks pretty good cosmetically. So there might be, there might be ways Makes to sense. fix it without completely sanding down the whole floor. So maybe the cost will be less than I thought. But what I will tell you is at least here in Vancouver, getting anyone to even come quote a job that small can be a very can be very challenging. So uh, we'll we're gonna we're gonna pursue it, but yeah, it might it might not be it might just not be practical to to get the floors repaired. Um, so the stakes are that uh, as restitution, if I win, Dennis will do eight hours of any chores at my house. But obviously, I had to put something up too. Yeah, yeah. So because I am pretty confident. I offered up an equal bet, eight hours of chores at Dennis's house if I lose. So we have a full day of basically doing any work around each other's household at stake here, which I think is going to compel both of us to prepare for this pretty um What What I'm carefully. upset about is that when I've done things that you haven't liked in the past, past we have not ended up in a ring what is going on with this why is there unfair treatment of employees i'm not gonna i feel you, personally you're wrong. in such a different weight class <laughs> freaking guy no i'm not fighting you the one time he looked angry enough to hit me i ran <laughs> not only ran i leapt a fence yeah <laughs> i was I was getting away I thought from you were that talking noise. about the other one i was like you didn't run you no stuck, connect four you stuck in a car yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i almost yeah, yeah. caught you <laughs> yeah, you did. Which is why I left the fence because I can't, I can't outdo him in speed. It's gonna have to be agility, boys. Uh, by the way, I just want to clarify this. A lot of people are commenting on LMG clips that if I don't want people to wreck my floor, I I shouldn't have video editors moving my furniture. I didn't know they were in my house. <laughs> like. He did not actually ask them to do that. I feel, I feel like I feel like there was just a lot of anger directed at me in the comments of that video. That Bill, did you look at the comments under that video? Yeah, uh, subscribe to LMG Clips, but the comments were all over the place. I I I, I just couldn't fathom it, I and it wasn't looked. it wasn't one of those things where you know how it is, right? Where you'll read a thousand comments, and the three mean ones are the ones that you remember. No, it was like a lot of them. And I'm sitting here going, how did you guys get this so wrong? I didn't ask for this. I, I, I'm just confused. Why, why did they, I didn't, I haven't watched, I've watched bits of it. I, I watched Dennis fall on the stairs like 47 they times. They moved the bed to troll me by doing a bad job of painting a wall in my house because they know I'm particular about paint finishes. Got it. And then they did paint the wall. And then they did paint the wall. Did they paint the wall well? And they did do a bad job. Ah. Okay. So mission accomplished, I guess. There was just a fair bit of collateral damage. <laughs> ah. Yeah, you should have had uh, belts 
Pope Pe- feet. People are asking who picked the challenges. They picked the challenges. I didn't know anything about it. Like I, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I feel like there's this assumption that I micromanage everything that happens here, or that I somehow dictate the way that we do everything. I don't there think are, you even could. There are eighty people working here. That would be a lot of work. Yeah, that, there's another there's another really big one I've seen lately. I saw a lot of this on the power supply tester unboxing. Mm, uh, what is with Linus always asking how much of my money you spent? It's a really simple explanation. There's particularly a handful of people internally. Jake, uh, Kyle, um, trying to think of, of who else loves memeing on this. But there's, there's a number of people internally who love memeing on any time, any time they buy something expensive. They'll bring me over and be like, look how much of your money I spent. I'm just like, come on. And, like it's, it's people, it's people memeing. And the, the number of like psychological a- and analyses that I've seen of 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 my behavior around w- talking about it as my money when it's company money or 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 using it as or using it as a way to to put others in their place or whatever else I'm sitting here going whoa whoa let's all slow down I mean I guess I guess it's one of those things where people don't have the backstory they don't know that that we're memeing but i guess what i would ask is if you're not sure maybe don't assume not sure about what like if i'm if i'm you know subjugating people oh like using through it microaggressions okay. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 okay yeah, yeah. i i don't know it's uh people like the my money lingo maybe why it strikes people wrong right but that's what they do that's what they do they 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 they, they, talk, they talk about it that way and I mean, if we want to get, if we want to get really, if we want to get really technical, um, you're right. It isn't my money. Yeah, it belongs to Linus Media Group Incorporated, which is held by a hold co that I don't even know the name of because it doesn't really matter. It's just like a, a legal structure thing. It's a hold co that I want to call Yvonne Umbrella Corp, but I haven't really gotten a lot of buy-in for that. But it's, it's I, held, I voted for it. Yeah, it's held by the same hold co that also holds Floatplane and also holds Creator Warehouse. So Floatplane Streaming Service, Creator Warehouse merch uh, run by Nick. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, the money technically belongs to that company. Uh, but if we were to choose not to invest it back into the company, which I think we've made very clear over the years that we are super into. Um, Hence power supply tester. The second that I pay income tax on it, yes, it actually does become my money because Yvonne and I own the company outright. So I could call it that, actually. But the reason that I do is not to make any kind of point to anybody. It's because people internally think it's freaking hilarious to rub it in my face when they are spending my money. So there's the full context, guys. I don't know. It's just been, it's been, th- th- those two videos in particular, there's just been some pretty wild theories about, you know, why I'm doing the things that I'm doing when actually it's, what is it, Occam's razor? Sometimes the, I always the, forget. I forget, I forget which razor it is where the simplest, Ignorance and Malice or whatever? Uh, n- not that one, where the simplest explanation is uh, generally the, the, right one. the correct one. Yeah. yeah, it's Occam's razor. Yeah. Um, what do you want to talk about next? I feel like there's still actually a lot on the docket. Uh, there is. There is. Oh, I didn't know this at all. Did this like really recently get added to the dock? Starlink V2 will connect directly to cell phones. Oh, cool. That is cool. That's must, super cool. So you must... could like be on your... Because it's not Wi-Fi. It's like... Wait, why would you even... So what? Has it like a hotspot? I mean by directly? I'm going to read. I'm not sure. Okay. Tell me more. Musk and T-Mobile CEO Mike Mm -hmm. Sievert? Sievert. Going with Sievert. Roll with it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Announced on Thursday that the next generation of Starlink satellites will launch with the capability to provide internet connectivity. Period. Okay. Ah. Uh, The partnership is called Coverage Above and Beyond. T-Mobile says uh, in the U.S. T-Mobile says in the U.S., but Musk says worldwide. Interesting. Got it. Uh, Musk at the live event said, there will be no dead zones anywhere in the world for your cell phone. 
it will save lives. That is actually arguably valid. That's super cool. Yeah. There's even, like, I drove pretty far into the, well, I didn't, I rode, I guess. I was not doing the driving. Uh, pretty far into the interior this weekend. And there was many times where I didn't have cell signal for a very extended period of time. Yeah, for sure. And like if something happened, honestly, there was a lot of cars driving by. But like if we went off road for whatever reason, yep. something happened, like it could have been pretty bad. Um, and like, yeah, you can say you should have other things with you, but a lot of people aren't going to do that. Uh, any 5G cell phone will be able to take advantage of this service without modification. It's actually interesting. T-Mobile contribute, uh, T-Mobile's contribution to the project is a portion of their 5G spectrum called mid-band PCS uh, for a balance of speed, capacity, and, and yeah. penetration. Ideal for device-dense metropolitan areas. No, not limited to con continental U.S., um, Hmm. which in this case, which has always been confusing to me, and maybe someone will explain it, does not include Alaska, even though it says continental. Yeah, Alaska's on the North American continent last time I checked. But yeah, because remember when we did Highlander? It could be that they've drifted off toward Russia, but... I... Remember they did High... We, when we did Highlander, it was yep. like the second tallest mountain in the continental United States, and I was like, mm, uh, isn't there tons of taller ones in Alaska? And they're like, nope, doesn't count. I'm like, oh, weird. That's actually a thing. Oh. I just, I don't understand. I see. Yeah. Anyways, um, it is yeah. It is not lim limited to that. Hawaii, Alaska, see Puerto Rico, and territorial waters are all covered. Per Musk on Twitter, connectivity will be two to four megabits per cell zone. Ooh. So it will work great for texting and voice calls, but not high bandwidth. That makes sense. The service will be beta trialed in selected areas at the end of next year, and will include and will be included for free with some T-Mobile plans. That's pretty cool. That's cool for T-Mobile. <clears throat> Tesla vehicles currently connected to the AT&T LTE network will also be able to connect to Starlink V2 for a speed increase. Tesla breakdowns in remote areas will no longer leave drivers stranded without a signal. Interesting. Cool. There's a discussion question. Is the 2 to 4 megabits per cell zone figure per user or in total? Uh, will other cellular carriers around the world cooperate with Starlink? Will Tesla drivers have any control over their connectivity when crossing international borders? All legit questions. These are all very good questions. We can't answer at all. Yeah, we have no way of knowing. Nope. I mean, I I think that um, I think that SpaceX has done has shown that they have a pretty clear idea of what the, the path into the future is for Starlink in terms of the actual infrastructure itself, but with respect to how billing works, how crossing geographical arbitrary lines on a map works, uh, there's there's still so, 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 so much to be sorted out. It's exciting to me. I really like this idea in general. Um, I, I hope Starlink over time is able to come down in cost. Uh, I just talking to a bunch of people. I know a lot of people that would move to less densely populated areas more quickly if things like Starlink were more easy to get, including uh, uh, a story that I don't think I'm going to get into uh, for reasons that I'll maybe explain to them later. But one of the float plane employees um, oh. has been thinking of moving somewhere that's actually super cool. Yeah, but there's major internet hookup Ooh. issues, and Starlink came up, but then availability of getting it there is like kind of potentially a problem, and all these other types of things. Right. Um, and I didn't see the end of that story, and there's reasons why I don't think we should talk about it. But um, yeah, like being able to enable people to move more places and to hopefully uh make it less of a requirement for career advancement to be in densely populated metropolitan areas. Yeah, would be that'd be awesome. Sweet. Yeah. It'd be very um. Cool. You can go now, by the way, if you want. Where am I going? Just away. I'm leaving? Yeah. Uh, one of the YouTube commenters said they just feel so sorry for you on the WAN show. They feel sorry like for me. Like, you can tell you just don't want to be in the chair anymore. Oh, so yeah. I just want to. Oh, yeah. I just want to. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. A it's... <laughs> little bit more loop body wanna... language analysis wanna... going on here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we were talking about this before the show. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. Um, yeah, do you need to have some birds to take care of or like actually other pressing that, that stuff is duties? done? Oh, oh, is do we have an update on the burbs? The, the they we are done. The, okay, so for two weeks, it's a long, are you, a have long you given, of time. have you told people about this? Like, 
on stream much or I don't know. I, I know you talked about like the the smoke hurting the birds, right? Yeah. I can't I, I don't I, know if it was pre-show was or main pre-show? show. I can't tell. Okay, well, we're getting an update on Luke's burbs health issues. Yes. So, yeah, I I have two small birds. They both got sick. Uh we were thinking we're fairly certain um that they both got sick because of smoke inhalation. Um no one my my roommate nor myself nor my girlfriend smoke in the apartment my girlfriend and i don't yeah. smoke at all um it's not us basically you know um but there is considerable like very considerable like i start getting headaches from the amount of secondhand smoke that i'm getting smoke floating into our apartment from people that smoke below us in the apartment um and smoke can kill birds extremely quickly um, both of our birds weigh roughly 30 grams and are like mostly made of air because of what fills That's feathers and stuff. Um, so they don't have a lot of mass to like deal with processing that type of stuff. So they can just like take them out. They both got sick. We think that was why, uh, did some stuff to better like seal the apartment. So less of that starts coming in, um, and needed to feed them antibiotics for two weeks through syringes where we had to catch the birds. This is like almost like trigger warning level like upsetting content warning yes go ahead and describe it's, it it's bothersome you got so they have really bad low light vision so we would turn the lights down so it's very very dim and i can barely see but i can see they can't see i have to catch the birds and i have big clobbering hands and they weigh 30 grams so i have to try to not crush them um but i also have to hold them firm so that they don't squirm around with their wings and break a wing so i have to make sure that they can't move their wings but i'm not crushing them and then i have to hold their head in place so that they can't get away from it and then my girlfriend would have to take the syringe which has like just a plastic end it's not a needle yeah would have to take the syringe and work it into their beak and feed them the medicine and the one was hilarious because i would catch him and then he would complain which would involve opening his mouth <laughs> so it's really easy to deal with um he's funny Less and then smart. yeah then the other one is more you know on it and he would not complain but he would close his eyes which was always heartbreaking um if i had him in my hands he would try to get out of the grip and he would try to like bury his head in my hand yeah which was sad but also cute uh but yeah he would close his eyes he would close his beak and he'd tuck it and it made it really hard um and that was they were clearly upset about it we'd we'd have these moments where they'd be like making it very clear they would they were upset. One of the things they do when they're angry is they spread their little wings out. Little 30 gram thing is like, I'm big. <laughs> come at me, bro. Yeah. It's like it's like basically like me doing it. <laughs> Yo, come on. No, come on. Come on, dance. No, dance, mother <laughs> But then there would always be like a yeah. moment later where they're like, okay, we're cool. Um, okay. But doing that for two weeks, like they were they were clearly very unhappy about seeing hands. Like if I was talking to them near their cage and I moved my hand on my leg, you'd see the bird go like, <laughs> "Sup? What's going on over there?" Um, so that was unfortunate, but that's over now. So I'm very happy about that. Um, yeah, you know, I float plane chat was talking about this. I never really thought about how kind of dark the canary in the coal mine saying is. Yeah, and like there's... the use of birds for that, but it yeah. totally makes sense now. Like I always just thought, oh, canaries have a particular sensitivity to whatever particular gas was a problem in that particular type of mine. I'd never really thought about that generally birds just do have very little actual mass. So any kind of toxin just knocks them out. Just takes them out. Yeah, really fast. And like when they get sick, they try to hide their sickness because um th there's this hunting thing where where people will talk about how like <sighs> i don't want to misquote this like lions if they're hunting zebras sure they'll often go after the the the, the like weak ones or whatever but the reason why they do that is because it's the easiest one to individually identify Oh, so they, they just all know it's we're not, going for that it's one. It's not because it's weak. It's because they can all identify it. So there was, there was a problem where there was like researchers that were, they would add like a, a tag to a zebra and they would find that those ones would just always die because the lions would get them every time. They weren't weak. They were easy to identify. 
So there's something with birds where they will try to hide that they're sick. Right. Yep. So it's really hard for us to identify. And there's like little, little things that you can you can kind of pick up on, but they try to hide it. Uh, but something about the canary in the coal mine thing. I know this is not a tech topic, but I'm going to share my screen really quick. Yeah. For uh, sure. I thought this was really cool. Um, canary in oh the coal God. mine oxygen tank, a canary resuscitator. So the miners felt bad for the birds. No way. And they <gasps> made little, they're a little tank. And it has an oxygen tank built into it, and they can bring the birds back. Shout out! I knew there were good miners somewhere. <laughs> and like, yeah, it showed like they a lot of them actually cared. Um, that is so cool. Yeah, and like it's still rough, right? Like, it's well, not it's saying, not a, it's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. And I'm not saying like you should use animals for whatever, and I don't want to get into those types of topics. But I, I just after getting birds, this conversation came up, and. I looked into it, and the fact that I don't know what the heck this is, I don't know what that is. I don't but know what that is either. but the fact that they like cared, and some of the people went and made this thing, I just thought that was really cool. That's and they super gave it a little cool. perch, yeah. so it's comfortable and stuff. Like Maybe-ish. I don't know, it doesn't look it's, like the most comfortable. Enclosure. No, and it's very small and yada 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 yada. But it wasn't like they just like let it die and didn't care. Which oh, I thought it was true. Cool. Scott says it wasn't due to the feelings about birds; it was due to a shortage of canaries. That honestly makes sense, but I'm gonna think of it. The Thanks, other way. capitalism. <laughs> Darn it! Canary Whatever. shortage. All I right. I still think it's cool. Uh, why don't you hit us with a couple <laughs> birch messages? Brutal. Uh, From Aaron, uh, do you know at this point if Lab 32 will be obtaining accreditation under a standard for their testing uh, for credibility or anything like that? Um, okay, so they ask uh, ISO 17025, General Electric Competence Testing Calibration Laboratories, a sure must for credibility. Honestly, I'm going to leave that to I'm going to leave that to Gary. I mean, if it's just a matter of us having our own internal best practices that we publish, not even best practices, our own internal policies that we publish, um, where we you know published uh, how often we check for calibration of our uh, of our tools or whatever else then if he thinks that's good enough then I support it if he thinks that's not good enough then I support that too I mean that's the thing about hiring experts is you've got to kind of trust them one way or the other and um, so far man that that whole team has been just like a dog on a bone um, every time I'm like hey could we do this? Like, okay, I, I had the idea, like toilet idea, right? I'm like, man, with the way that SSDs are going from SLC to MLC to TLC to QLC to PLC, I mean, we're going to have five bits per cell soon, which has a significant impact on write performance to the NAND flash, right? Um, I'm like, with the way that SSDs are actually, in a way, getting slower, and with the way that internet speeds are at the same time, getting way faster, it could conceivably happen that your system SSD could be a bottleneck when downloading games. Like you could actually, like there could be some validity to buying a gaming SSD (laughs) because you need to be able to sustain a hundred, in some cases, 120, 30, 150 gigabytes of constant data flowing in it. I mean, here in here in even Bumble Bumble North America, uh, you know, I, I always love hearing Japanese people talking about how fast their internet is and how cheap it is. I'm like, well, the whole world can't be Tokyo, okay? So, I mean, even here in North America, we're getting residential internet connections that are two and a half gigabit. Now, that's 250 megabytes a second, which. Sure, when we look at the marketing data for SSDs, doesn't sound like that much. We can do 7,000 megabytes a second. Right, but we can you do it cases. sustained, though? Yeah, that's Can true. you, though? And so I was, so I'm, so I'm messaging Gary. It's like middle of the night. And I'm like, hey, here's an idea. And he's like, um, oh, oh, and the other thing that I, that I wanted to look at was um, the other, like, toilet idea I had was, the standard for like cat 5e or cat 6a cabling or whatever else is you know x amount of speed at y distance right and i was like yeah but does anybody actually test that like what if this adapter like doesn't doesn't do 100 meters 
that would be a good thing for people to know. So I, so I sent him over these things and he like immediately responds, which he's not like supposed to because he's not working. But he's like with this like long thing typed out. He's like, yes, we have actually considered both of these and we will we will be adding these to our test suites for like these categories. And this is the part of the lab that we're going to build it out. And I'm sitting here going, why do I even why? Why do I even send these messages? Because clearly you guys, okay, to be clear, I have actually come up with things they didn't think of, but nope. I'm I'm really, 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 really excited um, to have a really talented team working on this. We're, uh, I've, some, of, some of them are public now. Uh, I've seen a couple comments. People have noticed, kind of, we, we never really announced it, but they have quietly noticed that our uh, keyboard guy, Antoine, has a pretty cool work history, as does our audio guy, Sam. Um, we are very serious about the talent that we're recruiting and yeah it's gonna be good yeah you mentioned japan i Ma did matthias asks hello from japan oh sup matthias matthias j what's your most memorable tech experience from your visit to japan p.s we still use fax machines daily in the office uh, well <laughs> but are they internet connected fax machines running at 1.6 terabits per second no, probably not. Yeah, the, okay. uh, the airport Wi-Fi was pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I forgot about that completely. The airport Wi-Fi was mind blowing. Actually, nuts. And this was back when you know here in, uh, oops, I think I bleeped in the wrong spot. Well, whatever, <laughs> North America. Um, our airport Wi-Fi was like barely functional at at that barely. point in time because I I was going through purging some pictures. Right. Like a week ago or something. And I came across the airport Wi-Fi from when we were there uh, because I took a picture of it because I was like, this is insane. At that point in time, not now, but back then, that was faster than some people's internet that I knew personally. Oh, yeah. At their house. 100%. Like, that was crazy. Um, Sorry, everyone's virgin ears. Oh, my most memorable tech experience. I mean, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I have to say the, the Omron factory tour. It was... It was well, yeah. it was such a moment for me uh, where all of a sudden I was getting insight not just into you know that switch that Logitech sponsored us to go you know watch being made or um, you know, Omron the company but I I got far more insight than I was expecting into the Japanese work culture and quality yeah. culture yeah it's just it's different from the Germans who we had just visited at uh, ZF and um and cherry it's 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 different but it's like it was these two completely different paths to exactly the same goal and uh you doing know doing those two tours back to back roughly not quite but you know what i mean was really cool yeah it gave me it gave me a ton of respect for the the dedication to quality that culturally um, at least within within these companies, right? Like you know, obviously you can't just paint with broad strokes, right? Yeah. You know, oh, everyone in Japan is X, or everyone in Germany is Y. Like it, it doesn't work like that, obviously. But it was it was very cool just uh, seeing how proud they were of the redundancy they built into the switch. They said, yes, it's extremely precise and it's very high quality. And the best part, there's two of them. Mic drop. Right. Yeah, we. I remember specifically. I don't know if this ended up on camera or not, but I remember specifically having a conversation about like one approach is excessively high quality, do it once. And the other approach yeah. is really high quality, make it redundant. Yes, that it's was like, that was the the German approach versus the Japanese approach. In a nutshell, having seen you know the manufacture of precision mechanical switches in both countries, essentially. Yeah. Question here from Adam. I have a quick question regarding satellite internet systems for gaming. Here in Australia, our broadband network is terrible, <laughs> especially in rural areas. And I was wondering how viable Same Starlink really. would be in terms of latency. It's not great. Yeah, latency is a bit of a problem. It's it's the, it's just got to go a long way. And you know, yeah, um, Australia also just is a really long way. Like even so across are other the countries surface in that area that have wildly better internet. Yeah, well, 
not an excuse. Figure your stuff out, Australia. Well, it's a long way. Okay, the excuse is that long of an underground cable to serve that many people is expensive. And, yeah. and I'm not saying it's a good excuse, especially for what Australians pay for their internet. Bad excuse. Australians get hosed for internet and I have felt bad for them for a very long time. There are other countries yeah. that are in just as bad of a situation that, or or similar, I guess, um, that have way, 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 way cheaper access to way better connections. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's it. Ben Rousey says, funnily, New Zealand has great internet while Australia sucks. That's over in float plane chat. Is that true though? As far as my understanding goes, yeah. Well, that's... I don't necessarily know. Well, that's not very neighborly. Maybe they should share their pipe. <laughs> okay, to be clear, they are completely separate countries and not actually that close. But... I don't know enough to say yeah. that it's great internet or not, but many years ago, the last time I looked into this, it was faster and cheaper. I, I don't know, though. It's been a long time. All right, then. From Bennett. Hi, Linus. I prefer manu manual screwdrivers, but my friend prefers electric ones. What made you decide to go with a manual screwdriver instead of an electric one? Um, I mean, they both have their pros and cons. Uh, the big thing for me is that I'm, well, not the big thing for me. I, I'm really used to using a manual screwdriver. I always forget to charge things. I, I really wanted bit storage in the driver and really organized. And obviously, if you took up the internals with a motor and a battery, it would be a little more difficult to do that. I don't think it's impossible for us to do a, a motorized screwdriver at some point in the future, but... It would have to be, there would have to be a reason for us to do it. We'd have to have identified something that we can do better. In the case of our manual driver, it was really clear to me that the perfect combination of ratchet feel, bit storage, and ergonomics had not yet been achieved. So that was what we set out to do. But with a, a motorized driver, just because I don't personally use them, it would be less obvious to me, and I would really need to spend some time trying to answer that question. I think there's also a sacrifice. Like, you're you're gaining speed and potentially also power, but I think you're giving up a certain amount of control, which, like, computers are still a relatively small electronic. I don't know. And one of the big things with computer screws in particular, I mean, to be, to be clear, it's designed for you to work on anything, but... Um, one of the things about computers is most of the screws are pretty short. So to think that an electric driver is going to help you go a lot faster than like this. Um, I, That's legitimately often all you have to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. Question here from Rowan. Linus, you often say, Nick is going to kill me for showing this about prototype LTT products. Sure. Yeah. But why? What's the reason for keeping the business under or these products under wraps? The reason is that it creates a bunch of demand for products that people can't buy. And what if that product's like two years out? Yeah. What if what if someone's like, oh, well, I was going to place an order, but that product's not available yet, so I'll wait. Um, I'm annoyed that I have known about Skull and Bones for 10 trillion years and it's still not out yet. Yeah. So there you go. Like it's... I, I completely understand his perspective. I just get really excited about things sometimes, and I really want to talk about them. So that's how he and I end up um, butting heads and to, occasionally. To speak more specifically about the Skull and Bones thing, too, like what we were shown in like 2017 or whatever looked like, oh, we're probably going to have a game very soon. But it could be the same type of thing with this type of stuff. Like, I mean, the screwdriver was like that for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yep. If you have a version of the screwdriver that like works and you can show off and it's like, oh, wow, that looks really close to being done. And then maybe there's a hiccup here or a misstep there or, or whatever happens. Some company falls under that you were working with. So now you need to work with someone else and things change and things yep. happen. And, and it can be very frustrating as a consumer. So you just don't really talk about it until you're more confident that it'll be coming soon. We talk about that in the video that is going to be accompanying the screwdriver launch. The difference between making one screwdriver and mass producing a screwdriver is colossal. And we, we learned a lot. Uh, we, we, learned, we learned a lot. Uh, oh, oh, I, I need to talk to you guys about something. Um, okay, so I've talked through already about... I've, or I've talked to you guys already, those of you who watch regularly will know what I'm talking about, but I've talked to you guys already about my issue with pre-orders, right? When you provide money for something mm. that has not yet been seen, um, you are essentially inviting a company to screw you over, right? They could, they could cut corners on the product before delivery. They could just not deliver it. Uh, you, are, you are essentially giving your money interest-free to someone else to hold it and... 
Who knows, right? So we haven't taken pre-orders on Backpack or Screwdriver. With that said, I've talked about how these have been major, major investments for our company. So with Backpack, what we did was rather than making it pre-orders, we did a small pop-up shop and we opened up orders after the pop-up once people who bought the Backpack, legitimate, real-world, actual customers, had had some time to review the product and leave their reviews on lttstore.com. So at that point, from my point of view, that is a, that is a back order. That's not a pre-order. Uh, the bulk of the shipment is still pending, arriving at our warehouse, but there are real backpacks reviewed by real customers that are available to anyone who's looking to make a decision. And uh, thankfully, that strategy has paid off really well because the reviews are excellent. And, uh, you know, as you guys have probably seen, we've sold over 20,000 backpacks already, which is a huge, huge relief and a long way toward uh, the break-even point on the project. As I said earlier, I think we're going to see another big boost once they're actually in stock and as we head into the into the holiday season and, you know, gift-giving season and all of that. So overall, backpack, oh, success. It's been, it's been a relief. Um, yeah, anyway, screwdriver. Now, what we're planning to do tomorrow is we're planning to have a live stream. I already announced that we shipped to Project Farm already, right? Yeah. Okay. So we are going to do a live stream tomorrow and we've got two separate dates that we could go live with screwdriver pre-orders. Do you mind to set up a poll? Yeah. Please? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we've got two different dates that we can go live. We can either go live at the moment that the live stream goes up where we will be allowing... I mean, I can't say completely unsupervised because when things are live, um, spicy stuff can happen. I was going to talk to you about that. I know, I know. I, yeah, it is what it is. But um, Well, there's some potential solutions. Oh, and okay. We maybe can talk about this that is then. actually a good time to bring it up because sure. I wonder what other people think. So something that we could do is have it so that like we have a producer yeah. and the stream goes to a rig and we can either cut out parts or mute parts if people say things that are like obviously not good and i don't mean about the screwdriver oh that could be construed incorrectly yeah i mean like someone walks up to the mic grabs the mic and just starts yelling a bunch of like stupid ridiculous things that we wouldn't want on our channels ever not that it like with nothing to do with the screwdriver um because that could be bad yeah. Okay. So to be clear, the point would not be to censor any yeah. impressions of the screwdriver, just to make that yeah. abundantly clear. But, but is that is that like okay or no? I mean... Because the original idea of having it yeah. just on float plane was to try to make the impact of that potential reality less. But now you guys want it on YouTube. Yeah. And that's... Um... Because we would have essentially the whole idea was to not have editorial control, and now we would have some amount of editorial control. It's for a good reason. Yeah. But I'm wondering what the community thinks about that. I think that overall, we've had really good experiences with our community at in-person events. Hundred percent. We have never had a problem with that. Yep. Um And that's not to say that it'll never happen. I'm sure it will at some point. But I think that. By and large, the kinds of people that show up at an event like this are are not looking to uh, you know to to hurt people for no reason. So I think that from my point of view, we should probably just go with a straight live feed. I think that if anything were to happen, we can just cut that out of the vod. But that would be that would be in the vod, not the live stream. Because for me, the important thing is that where that live stream is going to be set up. So it'll be, I believe it's a two camera setup, one for the person, they'll be probably small in the corner and one overhead is at a desk where we'll have screws and wood and uh, some computer components like dead ones from, from free geek uh, where people can actually use the driver and give their firsthand impressions. That's the idea behind the live table. It's cool that you guys are still working with free geek. Yeah. Those guys are, those guys are great. Cool. Yeah. So here's the idea. Or here's the question. Should we go live for back orders during the live stream? If you guys are sitting there watching people's impressions, we're, 
we're not able to control what they say. If they don't like it, they're going to say they don't like it. If they like it, they're going to say they like it. Or do you guys want us to wait, give people a couple days with it, a few days with it, and go live with our back orders maybe like Tuesday or Wednesday, like sometime mid next week? I'm going to leave it up to you guys because we've had a fair bit of debate internally about which date is right. So we've got our poll going up on Floatplane. Uh, yes, when we go live, it will include the black version for back order. All right, let's show the results. Let's see what the people think. Good Lord. They are quite split on this. Yeah, wow. Well, I'm actually pretty surprised. Man, a lot of, wow, a lot of people are. It's it's like quite settled in at 60-40. Yeah, that's wild. Uh, do we, does, um, here, we'll, we'll wait for people to vote a little bit more and we should probably, we should probably provide, like, does straw pool still work? Um, I know we were having a lot of problems with it. There's a different one. I don't think it's .me anymore. Oh, yeah, it's like gone. Yeah, I think it's .com now. Okay. Is it like the same or what? I think sort of. Okay, create a poll. Here we go. Schedule meeting? What? There's a schedule meeting button on Straw Poll. So I don't even know. Uh, yes, you would still get an email notification. The email notification would just go out the moment that we open up back orders. Yeah. Um, okay. Bum, bum, bum. Multiple choice. Here we go. I'm just going to word it the exact same way. Your admin rights are only temporary. Okay. I think that... Okay. Yep. Yep. Twitch, you're getting a poll. You're getting a poll. I'm dropping it in there. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Here you go. Here you go. I gotta confess, I thought that it was. I thought that it was fairly. Uh, I thought it was a fairly simple matter that if people were there giving live impressions, like it's not. I don't feel like this product is as complex as a backpack. I feel like you can learn a lot of what you would need to know about it from using it for five or ten minutes. Uh, is it comfortable? Is it, you know, whatever. Um, but, but, you know, we've had some debate internally. We've had some people that agree with me. We've had some people that, uh, take the other position. So the only conclusion we could come to was to just have you guys decide because at the end of the day, um, I personally just wouldn't care. Cause like, I, I understand the people that say wait yeah. a few days, but I would just personally wait a few days. Like, I don't, I don't know. Right. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it's up to, up to whoever. I just like it. I would be interested in seeing like, oh, someone took it home and like really thrashed it or whatever and whatnot. Sure. And like, okay, that's cool. I'm very slow about making purchasing decisions though. So that's just me. Um, <laughs> yes. That's, that's a thing. Forever is a kind of slow. Yeah. 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 That's true. Um, but like uh, that doesn't impact when I think they should go up. Like, I don't, it doesn't make a difference to me. We'll see what other people say. All right. It looks like it is basically split 60-40. Well, actually, 57 to 58% wait a few days, 41% during the live stream. So I think it's I think it's that simple. I think basically we just leave it. Wait, what, what were the percentages? Sorry, say again. 58% uh, wait a few days, 40 well, it's moving a little bit. Yeah, so forty one percent. We probably the shouldn't bother multi poll in the future because it's one percent off. Yeah, it clearly <laughs> didn't make much of a difference. I mean, you never know. We have seen cases where the sentiment around something is very different within the float plane community versus this one the, the broader sample community. size of one is stupid. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I got to I got to tell you guys like I would have I would have preferred to do it during the stream. I think it would have been pretty hype and pretty fun. Uh but putting it live a few days later is not the end of the world either. So that's what we're going to do. We did kind of rush, sorry Luke. Um 
to get uh, don't apologize to me to get uh, a lot of work done just in case we were going to be <laughs> in case we were going to be launching tomorrow and we're not doing that. Thanks, Conrad. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he got it done. He got it done. Yeah. Rob the Tank says it's not an issue of trust. It just seems pointless to not do pre-orders, but then back order it before reviews. Well, that's the thing. Like I, I thought a that form of review people is... standing there. That's a form of review. Saying whatever they wanted was was pretty solid. Um, okay. All right. Uh, no zero crit. We will not be doing that forever. Sorry. I do like. I'm I'm one of those peeps that would wait until what was his name? Farm. Project Farm. Project Farm. I would wait until like a Project Farm or someone like that got their hands sure. on it. Um. So, but but again, that so I don't care when it's. <laughs> available for back order in that situation i would wait for whatever my mark is uh for some people that might be text version of reviews where people have taken home for a few days for some people that might be uh like another independent creator sure. whatever um but yeah uh oh speaking of um ordering things someone i i don't know what your username was i copy pasted part of the part of the thing and not the whole thing someone apparently wants to order 28 backpacks uh don't pay full price We'll sort something out. Contact customer care. Um, give us a little bit. Why? We're working our way through the. Well, maybe they have like their whole team or something like that. I don't know. Right. Uh, like not not per not personally. They just want. Like, you're not just gonna like. Gonna make a wall out of backpack. Yeah, I will never backpack use backpack bed. Um, I will. Yeah. I plan to live three hundred years, and I will never use any other backpack. <laughs> Go. <laughs> like no, I don't think it's like that. But um, yeah, yeah. Make sure make sure you get in touch with support. It could take a few days. Uh, we're working our way through a pretty colossal backlog. Um, ever since the backpack launched, it's been a little heavy, uh, but we should be mostly caught up by the time Screwdriver goes live, which will then probably- uh, Apparently it's a, yeah, somewhere. it's a whole office. Yeah, some people said they, they saw the comment. Got it, yeah. Um, I, That's a super cool like office gift. Yeah. That's like super cool. Um, As, baseline as possible as calmly and as balanced as possible i'm going to bring up um some people have asked about the warranty for the screwdriver oh yeah yeah we have all the wording done um here is it going to be posted it'll be on the product page cool screwed why is it currently conrad conrad would know i don't think it is i don't think the actual description is on there yet okay uh, here's the product description, work in progress. Oh, Will that uh, be uh, on the product page start. before we start taking the pre-orders? Yep. It's, it's already done. I just need to find it, find the wording. Okay. I'm going to read it to you. So. Cool. Um. None of you guys. Cover your ears. Oh my goodness. This is the wrong one. Did he send it to me in Teams or something? Sorry. I need a minute. Oh my God! Why is it doing this? Maybe I can try to find another topic. Yeah, sure. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Gaming hardware prices are all over the place. Too late, I got it. The here's the final copy approved by Legal. The LTT screwdriver is covered by a limited lifetime warranty against breakage due to defects in materials or workmanship for the usual and customary life of the tool. The limited lifetime warranty does not cover bits as they are considered a consumable item, tools which have been subject to abuse, misuse, negligence, or improper storage, tools which have been used improperly, e.g. using the screwdriver as a pry bar or a hammer, especially ratcheting screwdrivers, guys, come on. Uh, tools which have been altered in any way, normal wear and tear, including breakdown of materials over time, cosmetic damage, including scratches or changes in the finish of the plastic handle, products purchased from unauthorized dealers. To complete your warranty claim, you must send the product to the address provided by our customer service team. Freighter Warehouse Inc. reserves the right to inspect your product to determine if it is subject to this warranty. If we determine that your product is covered by this warranty, we will, at our discretion, one, repair the product at no charge for labor or parts, two, replace the product with the same model product, three, replace the product with a comparable product should your product be discontinued or otherwise unavailable or four provide you with a voucher to be used toward the purchase of other products on lttstore.com in order to make a warranty claim you must be the original purchaser of the ltt screwdriver from lttstore.com or provide a copy of the original proof of purchase I As... you're gonna wrap god part way through there no Just no not going so much. for it send in it uh some people are asking so at the event it's limit one per customer right uh oh i didn't really think about that yes is it? Okay. So people are wondering if there's a limit when you're doing the pre-orders. Oh, 
I don't think there should be. I don't think so. I don't think there should be because we're going to have 100,000 of these freaking yeah. things. Like, I got some screwdrivers to move. Like, I, I can understand maybe limits yeah. at this event just so yeah. that you don't sell out before the end of the day. Yeah. And maybe near the end of the day, you lift the limits or whatever. Yeah. I mean, this is not like a major scalping concern, I don't think. Um, I, it, there, it, they could be kind of short at the beginning, but our production capacity for screwdriver is higher than our production capacity for backpack. Um, and we about, have like a lot coming. We have a lot. Well, okay. We, we have a lot coming, but there will be, there will, they, they're going to kind of come in waves like backpack. And there are certain parts of the process that can be bottlenecks and, and that could be delayed. So if you want to get it, um, if you want to get it, like, like get an order in, but also I, I don't think it's going to be necessary for us to say limit one per customer. If you want to buy one for your friend or yeah. like buy some for your office or whatever else, then by all means, go for it. Good old Mape has a good point. Uh, definitely not hoping for a limit. Bulk ordering for a few people for shipping to New Zealand. Yeah, and you can expect shipping to be a lot lower worldwide on the screwdriver because it's smaller, a lot smaller. Uh, Nick has confirmed there is no limit online. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I see a lot of people commenting about why there is no warranty on the bits. Um, that's that is industry standard. There's there's there isn't a warranty on on bits. Um, if you, if you wear out your bits, which are made of S2 tool steel and screws are specifically made of materials that are softer than, than bits. The idea is that the screw is supposed to wear before the bit. Uh, if you do manage to use that bit enough to wear it out, uh, the idea would be that the cost of a replacement bit would be fairly negligible. Uh, we're going to be selling bit packs for, I believe, uh, it's either six dollars and 90 cents or something like that 6.99 online yeah nice Ah, uh, took me not that long but a little bit longer than i'd like to admit it's a really aggressive price considering how many bits are in a pack but it's i just... <laughs> that's cool I, I i had to i had to mean I'm always down with the aggressive pricing so they'll be they will be they will be available in different types of packs. There will be one that is the default loadout. Uh, there's one that's like all like Phillips focused. We've got um, a list here actually. We'll have oh. metric hex bit set, Phillips bit set, Imperial hex bit set, torque slash security torques bit set, and specialty bit set. I'm assuming the specialty bit set has like the the like the Y and all that weird stuff. Nintendo uh, and Apple ones and stuff. Ben Mitchell asks, uh, is there some kind of weird shipping situation like the stickers or the backpack? Uh, would it be cheaper to just order separately or should we bulk order? You and your friends should order together. Uh, for the screwdriver, there were enough people confused by the backpack, how we were shipping part of the order and then billing and shipping the backpack separately later that we've canned that this time. Not for backpack. Backpack will stay the way that it is just to avoid confusion. But screwdriver your order will ship complete. So it will delay other items you order. I, I want to make that right to go. abundantly clear now. Uh, especially because screwdriver were a lot more solid on when it's going to start to ship. Backpack, like we had one of the shipments, huh, we had one of the shipments get delayed by four weeks. Nice. Fortunately, one of the other ones got moved up by two weeks. <laughs> Yay, it worked. So we should, <laughs> assuming nothing else changes, still be able to hit our, um, we should still be able to hit our shipping windows on them. I wonder how many backpacks are floating in the port of Vancouver. As always, we will strive to under promise and over deliver. So take that for what it is. We got you. And speaking of taking things for what they are, uh, we screwed up with a story last week, Oof. the Apple ad story. Uh, last week, we were covering a story about Apple's personal, personalized ad system on iOS following a report claiming Apple uh, plans to prioritize. You keep doing that. and it Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I highlight uh, while I read. <laughs> and it's not, it's not the fact that the text changes color. It's the fact that it like it's Google Docs. So it says the name of who it is, and it puts that on top of the words. So it makes it literally impossible to read. Um, <laughs> but Apple plans to pri uh, prioritize growing its ad revenue from $4 billion to $10 billion a year. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, by increasing the amount of ads Apple users see, even on subscription-only services like News Plus. Uh, what we got wrong... 
Uh, after trying to set up a new iPhone and noticing and not noticing any pop-up requesting tracking permission, uh, Linus accused Apple of following a... I mean, I did go through the setup process. It wasn't an entirely unreasonable thing for me to think that it isn't yeah, there. Yeah, I did, I did like say a bunch of times that we didn't really know. Mm-hmm. Um, but accused Apple of following a rules for thee, but not for me type of approach. Uh, since third-party apps are required to present such a pop-up when the app comes up um a user famous exam 4207 okay nice uh pointed out on the ltt subreddit uh apple displays such a permission pop-up when opening the app store so we didn't get to that part um as of ios 15 it claims apple does not track you or share your uh personal information with any third parties um we're thinking the Apple does not track you prompt is is uh, basically saying that it doesn't track you across third party apps and websites, uh, which they which they indeed do not do. So, so what we should have said: Apple plans to increase the number of ads shown to its users just after it instituted stricter privacy rules that weakened its ad reliant rivals. So it's less. Uh, just blatant toxicity and more like antitrust stuff. Um, as we said last week, Apple's ad revenue has tripled as competitors have dropped. Um, the issue here is not Apple being hypocritical or increasing user tracking. It's that they are using their power and reach to fundamentally alter the mobile ad industry in a way that benefits them. That's fair enough. But I would still argue that like they're they're playing the same game. Yeah, but they're they just increasing their stake. Make the rules of the game. Which are which are good. Which are. We want these rules. Which are better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're better rules. They're good rules. Well, you should be happy about the, these. New yes, rules. they are. They are. They are better. Um, I think we'd all rather have just like less ads on devices we sure. pay a thousand dollars for. But yep. I don't think there should be any ads. Uh, like the the fact that there's ads in Windows is insane. Samsung TVs. Uh, we did a review TVs of one is recently, a great one. and literally, like when we when press home on the TV, it was either sixty or seventy percent of the pixels. That's wild. Were ads on a device that you purchase? That's crazy. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not defending that. That's actually like super ridiculous. I hate it. Uh, it makes me want to have not smart TVs, especially because smart TVs are often like so slow and incapable that I don't want the stupid TV to have built in stuff anyways. Just let me do it with my own devices and whatnot. But anyways, that's a different topic. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of questions about screwdriver. Um, oh boy. Hold on a second. Buh, 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 buh. Uh, no, if you order additional items, they will not be sold out while you wait for your order to ship. They will be put aside and they will be marked as 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 sold. Um, spanner security bit. Uh, that's going to be in the FU bit set because it's the one where manufacturers say FU. So it includes like tri-wing and like stupid stuff is that the specialty bit set yeah oh sorry internally we call it the fu bit set. okay yeah well, uh, i not don't know from us to you from the manufacturer to you that you should even need them yeah i don't, I don't i'm not even are you like are you sure about that that's the specialty bit set yes yeah, okay yeah. okay i believe there's a spanner in there okay um yes bit sets will be released at the same time garon ninja yes there will be robertson bits if you know you know superior superior canadian technology um Man, there's a lot of people asking questions about this. I just gotta, I gotta scroll. I gotta scroll. There was another one. I think I, oh, I might have scrolled past it. Uh, okay. Well, at any rate, there you go. Ugh. Yep. I'm over it. I'm not gonna find that last one. All right. So, yeah, I guess that's it for the Apple thing. The other thing, Apple doesn't track you outside their own ecosystem. Uh, but they don't need to when their users increasingly stay inside their walled garden of hardware software I just, and like and recurring rev- subscription services. Yes. Okay. Not not unfair, but it's not unclear either. And that that is, I think, the the main place where this could be a problem, is is if they have the pop up and it's clearly stated, and you say yes, then you're saying yes. And if they have the pop up and it's clearly stated, and you say no, and they only ask once, I think that's cool. All right. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Riley does note that it still feels a bit unfair to me that Apple can ask you once for permission to track you across all their apps and services, but other companies have to ask you again for each individual app. Yeah, that is a slight advantage. Um, I don't think there's a ton of companies that have a bunch of different apps. Um, Anthony's also mad. Um, 
I would argue that due to the bundled nature of Apple's applications and the permissions that they have by default, any ad served to you by them constitutes an unfair advantage, especially if you're asked the moment you open the App Store. Also, I've been getting ads in Apple News Plus despite paying for it, and I hate it. Yeah, I mean, I agree with the, yeah. the Apple News Plus thing. I don't understand or agree with it being bad that it pops up when you open the App Store. Well, no, it's he's upset Apple that product. it only happens once, hmm. that you're never prompted again. So it's like, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I have never noticed it. I've never noticed that that's what they're asking me when I first open the App Store. And well, this I is would with have iOS thought, 15. Do you, oh, okay. I, I haven't this is checked, new yeah, with iOS 15. I haven't used iOS 15. I would expect to find it in the setup of the phone. Me too, which is why I got us to try yeah. that. Um, so when it wasn't there, I was like, it's not here. I would read the prompt and not want more pop-ups. Mm-hmm. Um, I can understand why people might want more pop-ups. Um, as long as there is a prompt at some point, I don't necessarily mind it. I also think I would probably side with Apple on this one, which is against Riley and Anthony. Come at me, bros. Um, in the needing other developers to ask every time, because that sounds like a system that could be abused. Um, like some, some new thing trying to sign up under the account of some other like bro company that they're friends with so that they can skirt this thing because yep. they think everyone's going to be okay with this one app, but not with this other one. Yeah, That and, like, would absolutely happen. There's lots of paths for abuse. So yep. I wouldn't, I do not want that personally, but it's okay for Apple to have that abuse vector. It's, I mean, yeah, to be completely honest. So, cause it's pretty obvious when you're installing an Apple app and when you're not. Ry Riley didn't say, I that... don't think it's, I don't think it's a hidden thing that you're installing an Apple application or using an Apple application. This is sure. my whole point. So like, I actually, I'm going to take that back and say, no, I don't think it's the same abuse vector. Cause one oh, of them, okay. I'm talking about them like cheating and, and, and uh, abusing the system. Um, and that's why I don't necessarily want the system to exist. And right. the other one is you're, if you're using an Apple application, you're probably pretty darn sure it's an Apple application. So you know what's happening. Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't like ads to be super clear. I, I'm not reading the chats. So I don't know how people are taking this. Um, I just don't like, I have always been a proponent of wanting to, I, I think there's a lot of things you can go after Apple for. I don't think oh, it's good that yeah, they're increasing their ads. I think it's reprehensible that they have ads on this News Plus thing that apparently Anthony's paying for. That yeah. blows. I would be super pissed if I was a user of that. I think there's a lot of things to go after them for here. I just, to me, the prompts thing is like, what? I don't know, whatever. Anthony is updating the doc in real time. I'm watching that. I want to see it. I take uh, issue with the App Store thing because I would associate that prompt with the App Store which I might want to track me to recommend apps. This is instead so system-wide, system which I think is that's fair. an unfair advantage that Apple has. Uh, it is. It's it's a different set of rules. Minor. That is pretty minor. Well, he's not happy about it, and he's And a that user. is fair. Yeah, in this case, that's fair. Because... And the fact that you are yeah. served this before even being able to download any additional app, Apple or otherwise, is pretty sketch. You have to. You have to. You have to look at this, even Be, if you don't because, look at any Apple apps. Because of his point about like I, I want to get recommended apps, but I don't yeah. want to get recommended ads. I think that's fair. If that wasn't a thing, then I don't know. But but I, I think it is fair because of that. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? We're oh we're hiring. Uh, we're hiring more social media people. Must live in Canada already. Also, we're still trying to hire another writer for Mac address. Uh, Jonathan Horst doing a great job, but he needs some help. Let's go. Let's go. If you think you've got what it takes, uh, we'd love to see your application at linusmediagroup.com slash jobs. Yeah. Get it? Mac address applications, linusmediagroup.com slash jobs. Uh, that's actually, that's not it at all. That's pretty funny. That's really not it. That would be great if it Not was. even a little. Um. Uh, okay, so the next? only thing we're going to say about hashtag Twitch respond is that that is, is a developing, an absolutely developing story right now. Uh, basically, one Twitch streamer who was banned from the platform for an offense um, related to like uh, hate attacking someone else's stream um, permanently, permanently banned for the offense. 
um, has called out Twitch for a perceived difference in their application of rules depending on the uh, you know, uh, gender, race, or any other of the lines we use to divide ourselves from each other. And I think the only thing I really have to say about it for now, because as we have here in our doc, it's very much a developing story, is that um, Twitch does have a problem to solve with respect to even application Selective of moderation. their yes of their of their uh, community guidelines YouTube's and rules. having the same problem right now it's it's genuinely I have never even heard of this hashtag I have no idea what creators are involved I don't know what's going on all I would say is that it is actually a very difficult thing because it's one of those things where people will look at this company as like a person or a single entity but you have to you have to figure out the actions and resolutions of an entire team of people that is managing this. Um, I'm not saying they can't do better. Yeah. I'm just not surprised that there's problems. I mean, the uh, all we need to look at to, to, to kind of end cap a discussion about Twitch's opacity when it comes to application of their rules is the Dr. Disrespect ban. What's even happening there? No Someone one knows. Know. Yeah. No one knows. And it's quite possible. My understanding is some kind of settlement was reached. So it's quite possible that the world will literally never know what have, happened there. I have no idea. Again, that's another thing that I know nothing about. I didn't follow it. I don't know. I just don't care. Uh, ooh, Apple extends the self-repair program to add M1 and Pro and Max MacBooks after the successful... Hmm? Launch of the self-service repair program that initially targeted iPhone 12, 13, and SEs. MacBooks are finally getting parts availability, and the parts available are actually surprisingly comprehensive. Looks I good. will read them now. Logic boards, displays, batteries, trackpads, keyboards, keycaps, touch ID sensors, hinges, screws, lid angle sensor, MagSafe board, antenna module, vent module, fans, coolers, audio board, flex cables, uppercase, and bottom case. The fact that they actually have chassis components available is impressive. That's the only word I can really use for it. I have not seen that before. Mm, Steam Deck. This, this, can you buy a chassis for the Steam Deck? I'll look it up. If, yeah, if you want to check that, because I know I've had I know I've had conversations with Microsoft around uh, that Surface um, <clears throat> component that we bent trying to get it open, and they were like, "No." Uh, so the fact that Apple is making these available is pretty freaking cool. With that said, the tools provided are similar to the tools provided for phones, including the yep. option to rent a toolkit for seven days at $49. They do. Back plate and front plate. Okay, good guy valve. 25 bucks each. While purchasing these parts for ourselves, we noted that it was possible for M1 Max SKUs to purchase logic boards that did not match the original configuration. So additional memory, more GPU cores, and more storage were all available. It was also possible to purchase weaker configurations, including M1 Pro. The store indicated that we would only get a $378.40 rebate from downgrading our most expensive MacBook Pro to the least expensive option. It's not clear if this is a bug or not, but the fine print says that selecting the wrong parts may prevent completion of the repair. So it sounds like they might actually just ship the wrong thing if you order the wrong thing. Pricing in general appears to be high, considering the cost of the devices themselves, presumably to prevent people from simply assembling their own MacBooks. <laughs> Not that they could anyway, because the parts are locked behind a serial number filter. Um, so go f*** yourself, Apple. Discussion question. Would this kind of parts availability have completely prevented the iMac Pro saga and reduced it from a massive undertaking to merely quiet grumbling at pricing? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, it was like a five thousand dollar computer or whatever. I would have, I would have gladly paid five hundred dollars extra for a logic board, just to be able to fix it. That was what I asked for at the time. Uh, I still think that there's absolutely room for them to do better, but this would have prevented most of my anger. Uh, I think our last big topic is gaming hardware prices are all over the place. Yeah, I think there there might have been one other one, but I don't really remember. Let me find this one. Uh, yeah. NVIDIA says that excess inventory is dragging down its balance sheet. I wonder why you have excess inventory. You said it wasn't because of mining. I can't imagine what else it could be. Uh, Jensen mentioned this during their Q2 2023 earnings call. To deal with it, NVIDIA will reduce the number of GPUs it sells to manufacture manufacturers of 
its GPUs, uh, also known as board partners, um, and laptops so they can clear, clear put? Ex- clear out. Ah, uh, you put your thing there again. Uh, they can clear out existing inventory first. Sorry. <laughs> NVIDIA has also uh, instituted programs to price position our current products to prepare for next generation products. Price cuts coming! Very good. Let's go! That's cool. Especially because they're already back down a fair amount. Yep. But they got hiked. Not only was their scalping that increased pricing both from retailers and people but there was also msrp price hikes during the the big mining push so it coming back down is good uh jensen also hinted at uh exciting next generation gpu update in september i will look uh, i look forward to next month's gtc conference where we'll share new adv- advances of rtx reinventing 3d graphics and gaming Cool. I don't know about reinventing. But Meanwhile, sure. Sony is raising prices of the PS5. We are seeing high global inflation rates as well as adverse currency trends impacting consumers and creating pressure on many industries, says Jim Ryan, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment. Could be as much as a 20% Whoa. increase for disc and discless models in every major market except the US. Is Ooh. it still like impossible to get one? Back in July, Meta slash Facebook increased the price of the Quest 2 headset by 100 pounds. That's a 33% increase. And Microsoft is currently the good guy. They announced there will be no price increase, but did state they are constantly evaluating the market. So an increase could come further down the line. It sounds like the Game Pass um, Pass subsidy is going well, um, essentially. Uh, Jose LMG, I, I I, I don't know what you mean by variable tax products. Um... But what? I, I we don't use Squarespace for our store, so it would be a Shopify thing anyway. Sorry. They just keep posting this in Floatplane chat. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, I just looked right now, and PlayStation 5 on, on Best Buy's website, uh, bestbuy.ca is listed as coming soon. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, oh, there was other big Sony news. I don't. It's not in the dock, but they're getting sued, like like big time. big time yeah like each consumer might be able to claim back like six hundred dollars because Whoa. of alleged overpricing of games but the thing about games is maybe this is going to be an unpopular take but i don't think you can overprice a game you don't need it to survive it's not food it's not water it's not shelter it's it, mm. this is a, this is a luxury good um if you don't like it, you can buy some other game. I, I I don't I don't really understand this, to be honest with you. How do you get six hundred dollars for that? Well, it's like over an a, like a, a, a enormous span of time. How did they? I thought they had the same price games as like Xbox. I don't know the details. It's not in the doc. It's a UK suit for the UK store. So maybe it was just a matter of like the currency conversion or whatever else. But I, I like, like feel like there's something more. If this, if they win this, basically any product anywhere that got an unfavorable currency conversion is going to be affected by this. This could be an enormous, enormous precedent. And the problem with that is that it it's could result rights. in a big issue for particularly developing markets where they get lower pricing that is essentially subsidized by developed markets. If you force companies to charge exactly the same around the entire world, on the one hand, yes, you in the UK or we in Canada or in the USA or wherever else, we we might get better pricing, but there's going to be a whole world of other people that are going to be adversely affected by this. So I... So apparently they, they listed a $70 game for 70 pounds instead of converting yeah. $70 into pounds. These yeah. are going for like 80 USD in the UK, so that increased by $10. Uh... Part of it as well is like the Apple and Epic thing of the 30% commission. Therefore, yes. they're overcharging because it, they're just adding a commission to the sale price of a game. Sure. So I think this is going to be this is going to be a complicated one and I'm going to need to give it a little more thought, do a little more research before I have a clear idea of which side I stand on because it's obviously not cut and dried. It's as much due to locking into the PlayStation Store much like the App Store suits. Yeah, yeah I so I need to know a lot more about what's going on yeah. here to like Yeah, that is part of it um that there's that there's so it's kind of following up on the 
stalemate, I guess is what you would call it, between Epic Games and Apple over the fact that there are no alternatives to that 30% cut, which does, it is baffling to me that any consumer was siding with Apple on that. It literally costs you anywhere from whatever percent to 30%, somewhere between zero and 30% more to buy things from a monopolistic uh, seller, okay? You, you shouldn't be a fan of that. that. That's bad for you. For you. Yes, you. Very unless, you're a, unless you're an Apple shareholder, in which case, I don't know, maybe you're coming out. Maybe that's what's going Maybe you're on. coming out even or coming out ahead. I don't know. Um, oh, we should do some merch messages. Hit me, Bell. Not too hard. <laughs> First one here is from Skylar. How do the both of you handle being interrupted while in a workflow? <laughs> I get distracted for a long time. It, yeah, it kind <laughs> of really depends. Sometimes it can really derail me to the point where it's like, I think it depends how much of a groove I was in. If I was like really flowing really well and I was I was I was moving quick, and someone derails me, it, I can find it hard to get back there. Um, but if I wasn't in as and it's like very frustrating and it's like mentally taxing. But if I wasn't in as good of a groove and someone derails me, I find it easier to get back to at least there. That might sound like a weird comparison. So if I if I'm doing like really well and someone derails me, I'll get stuck doing bad for a while right yeah. if i'm doing okay and someone derails me i can get back to doing okay pretty easily if that makes sense yeah hopefully that makes sense question here from anon been watching since the beginning has there been any tech that has come out since you started doing this that you've considered life changing i mean i guess smartphones existed before i started making videos barely barely it was close, um, but technically, yeah. Yeah, technically, yeah. So, so what would be life changing? I mean, fiber optic internet, super life changing. Ooh, RTX graphics. Nvidia, am I back on your good side? Oh, is your life RTX on? <laughs> what is that? What is that article? Did you live slightly longer with RTX in your life, or whatever that was? I, I Do don't remember, remember that from just, forever. Just ago? buy it. That that one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, man, life changing i think practically nothing to be completely honest um electric car is kind of life-changing for me like i don't go to the gas station that is a change in my life yeah i don't have one so it doesn't count for me um hmm. there's like really minor stuff but i don't think it changed my life yeah. like i guess technically almost anything could change your life having this conversation changed our life but uh Jaden posted in Floatplane chat. When you look back at your life, how much of it do you want without RTX? Yeah. What a ridiculous, what a ridiculous thing. Um, yeah. I think one of my favorite things to now exist is just way better induction charging. Like having my mouse that is wireless and never needs to have battery changes or be plugged in or anything like that is great. Did you just do that? Nope. We'll see how this goes. What's next? Anon asked if we've considered having a run of left-handed screwdrivers. They are uh, they're ambidextrous. So yeah, I was going to say, hold on. We don't need a left-handed screwdriver, but thank you for the suggestion. From Jet, back in the day of YouTube Originals, were you guys ever approached to start a new series? No. We, we kind of came up with some ideas that I thought were sort of cool. Like back when, uh, back when YouTube was like 60% pranks, I thought like tech pranks would be kind of neat. So each episode would be uh, setting out our goal, working on whatever technology we need. One of the ideas um, was like, I... Oh, I remember this. You had, you had me developing theories for this. Yeah, yeah. So, this was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, I, I tried to kind of pitch it to them a couple of times, but there was never really any momentum. So we would we would come up with like, harmless like nothing awful but like harmless pranks that were enabled through some combination of, of technology hardware and software and then you'd have like a payoff um and some kind of learning outcome like you know oh and we did all this with an arduino or we did this or we did that uh but it didn't really get off the ground i remember a couple of those from noah been watching for a long time and we know a lot about you guys but we don't really know you What's there something that we might not know about you that we really should? 
Why don't we do each other? <laughs> okay, so we both know too much about each other. <laughs> I also don't know, like, what people might know. <laughs> people might know something. I don't know. I don't know what people don't know. Um. Okay. How do we, I mean, I feel like if I'm going to disclose anything about you, I need to at least like make sure, uh, make sure you're chill with it. Yeah, I can't. Um, you're on camera so much that I don't witness that I have no idea. I bet nobody knows that. No, for reasons. But no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So not that. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. Thinking. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, oh, maybe it was a bad idea. <laughs> Okay, I'll try to think of something about me. I don't know. I'm pretty... I feel like I'm a pretty open book. What do they not yeah. know about me? Um, I'll tell you what. You can do both of us. Well, I can't even think of something for you. You can't? Not really. I don't know. Okay, well, like, I like you said, I, I tried to shove it off pretty, on you. There's like little... Th like, uh, I can't think of a specific fact, but I think the statement of like, we don't really know you guys is fair and true parasocial relationships are bad and you don't see us off camera so yeah you, you don't know us but like the things that i can think of are very like uninteresting i don't know um okay uh i was born posterior i don't even know what that means it means that i was um I flipped over i took a lot longer and was a lot more painful yeah. And my mother reminds me regularly. Ah, gotcha. Um, I was extremely quiet as a child. That's so not interesting. No. Oh, like, I think I bored myself just saying that. I thought you said you were cool. His farts are really bad. I don't know if you guys know this. You have the loudest that... sneezes. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. I have extremely loud sneezes. I, um... And they hurt. <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. This is over. Next one. That yeah. was so boring. Sorry. I love we it tried. was the, the qualifiers that we really should know. <laughs> it's like born posterior <laughs> and quiet as a kid. I forgot Those that qualification. Answers. There is nothing you really should know. If you should really know it, we have said it. Um and that's all you need to know. I've said some things you shouldn't really know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was that really awkward uh, thing a couple even... weeks back. Yep. All I'll say is cigarettes. From <laughs> Matt, Matthew. Uh, hi, Linus. What's your take on the cloud? Or are you a more on-prem kind of guy? Seems like everything's moving to the cloud, and I just can't see myself giving all my data to Microsoft or Amazon. I do not, other than There's for There's forms work, of cloud that aren't companies like Microsoft and Amazon. You can form your yeah, own cloud. Yeah, Backblaze, sponsor the show today. Just saying. Well, so just, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah uh, you, you can like work with a, a server hosting provider to yeah. get your own servers and make your own cloud if that's yep. what you want to do. Uh, I don't have a cloud subscription service that's not for work. Like I have an expanded uh, drive thing for my work email that I just get so many emails with so many attachments. I don't really have a choice. I'm not going to go through and prune them. That's not really good use of my time. So I just have a big data cap on my work drive account. But other than that, I, I don't. I just store stuff on my own NAS or I will, um, since I conveniently have a super ball and internet connection at work that I can just set up servers on the other side of, I can just back up stuff there too. Question here from Anon. Linus, one time during a video, you had a Dale Jr. NASCAR driver hat on. Are you a NASCAR fan? No, that was given to me by Ivan. And I asked him, what the f***? And he didn't really, as I recall, have a great explanation for why he gave me that hat. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, or he did have an explanation, but I have it made no sense to me, so I don't remember it. That's also possible. Mm. Yeah. And I think that is pretty much it for the WAN show. We will see you guys again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. It's a bad time and a bad channel. Bye!
analog keyboards. I have reviewed an analog keyboard. Oh, the